Good morning and welcome to Join News at 6. The news is live on Joy 99.7 and hits 103.9 FM in Accra. In Kumasi, we're on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including ATL FM, Cape Coast, Might FM, Tamale, Bewa Radio, Yendi, and Nkiligi FM, Bali. Get radio, TV, and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. Coming up, energy experts cast doubt on PURC's ability to collect 5.8 million CD fine on ECG board members after they fail to publish a low shedding timetable. I'm wondering how the TURC is going to enforce that decision. How are they going to collect that money? My only reservation is the quantum. It's too high. Meanwhile, persistent gadget repairs and thousands of cities lost in discarded fish and meat products. That's the story of coastal operators at the Malata market on today's episode of Doomso Diaries. The last I threw about 10 boxes away. We have details of that. Also, health sector crisis beginning to explode as pressure mounts on government to employ more than 60,000 trained nurses who remain at home four years since completing school. We have been in the house without working. When exactly are we going to get our employment? We are in business. IMF projects robust economic growth for Ghana from next year with almost 5% growth rate in new economic outlook. We've got details on the Joy Business Report. And later, processes underway to extradite former Maslok CEO Sedina Tamakla Atunu to serve her 10 year jail term, handed her by an Accra High Court yesterday. You can just stay away, but so far as I'm lost relating to how you can extradite to from one country to Ghana, if there's a judgment against like this one, rest assured that should be brought down to face justice. These are more with me, Mami Sinyamiche Thompson. Let's get digging now. Now, there's doubts that the PRC can enforce the 5.8 million city fine imposed on ECG board members for failing to schedule a load shedding timetable to mitigate the impact of recent power outages. Energy expert Dr. Steve Mantiel is concerned political influence could frustrate the PRC's efforts in compelling the ECG board to fulfill its financial obligations. I'm wondering how the TURC is going to enforce that decision. How are they going to collect that money? And I sincerely believe that the directors will not comply. The political way to what is happening. And so I suspect that at some point, the powers that be will step in. Well, even former power minister Kobna Donko, who supports the PURC to crack the whip, thinks the fine is too much. It's too high. I was so jubilate if each director was fined even 10,000 CDs each. Because at this time, the most critical thing is the principle that directors can be held personally and collectively liable. But PUSC's Commissioner Ishmael Ejikumhini justifying the fines believes his outfit will ensure they paid according to law. I think the, comp- the, the numbers behind the computation, we've, we've demonstrated why we did that. It's up to, that's, our, that's the commission's decision, and I think it was well thought through. Let's see how they react to that. Well, persistent gadget repairs and thousands of cities lost in discarded fish and meat products. That's the story of coal store operators as the erratic power supply continues to bite hard on businesses. James Avedi takes us to the Malata market in Accra to tell the story. I'm here in the heart of Malata market in Accra to explore the doomsaw diary of operators of frozen food shops. Chocho, one of the owners of the cold stores here, tells me on several occasions she has had to dispose of some product which went bad because of the unstable power supply. The cost of the fish has also gone up. The ones we used to buy for 100 cities now sells for between 400 to 600 cities. The moment the fish becomes tender, no one wants to buy them. We are usually left with no option than to dispose of the cold foods that have gone bad. We are pleading with government to resolve the power crisis. Another trader, Ajah, says three weeks ago, 
when the doom saw became intense, tens of cartons of fish and meat products in his cold room went bad, running into lots of thousands of cities. The last I threw about 10 boxes away. So, so. James Avergy with that report to the health sector now. The health sector is facing serious crisis and could explode anytime soon as more than 60,000 trained nurses mount pressure on government to provide them employment. Their demand is coming at a time government is seeking to cut expenditure and raise revenue in compliance with the terms of the three-year IMF program. They poured onto the streets yesterday demanding immediate employment. Head of our health desk, Fred Smith, reports. Thousands who make up three cohorts of nurses who completed their training in 2020, 2021 and 2022 have been home since they completed school. The numbers appear impossible for government to deal with. Two, three and four years without work and their patience is waning. We have been in the house without working. When exactly are we going to get our employment? It is not easy for us out there as young people. Some of us have like resulted to farming, selling, trading and other stuff, which is not really our field. Their demonstration at the health and finance ministries, which are responsible for giving them work, give very little hope of their joblessness ending. No senior official is ever on hand to receive their petitions, except public relations officers who cannot resolve their concerns. Fred Smith, uh, head of our health desk with that report. Now, three teacher unions, Nat Nagrat and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers Association, are disappointed with the government's handling of negotiations concerning their conditions of service following a meeting at the Education Ministry on Tuesday. Despite engaging in closed-door discussions, uncertainty looms over the progress of these negotiations. The unions criticise government's approach and will take their next course of action after their meeting with the NLC later today. Thomas Musa is General Secretary of NAT. We are in negotiations and the rest of the issues they have, they will table it at the NLC. After the meeting, we can give full disclosures there on what has happened today. Certainly, we are still disappointed. You know, when we indicated to you yesterday that we have certain disappointment, we still maintain that position. And we've come here today and we have indicated to them whatever they have, they should take you to the Labour Commission 2 p.m. and we shall meet there to take it out from there. The rest of the issues will be discussed in details this meeting and they know what we've told them. We've expressed our concerns, frustrations and all the things that we are not happy with, we've told them. Away from that, some driver unions are defying the Ministry of Transport's directive to withhold fare adjustments until negotiations conclude, despite ongoing talks with government for over a week with no concrete agreement reached. Some drivers have unilaterally increased fares by at least 20% since Monday. Scheduled to meet with the ministry later today for final discussions, leaders of the Concerned Drivers Association and the Transport Operators of Ghana have stated their refusal to comply with the directive. David Abuado is public relations officer of the unions. Exactly so. We are charging the 20%. We started it on Saturday. We still continue taking it. Are you in this meeting tomorrow? We understand have been called to try and negotiate an outcome. Fair that will be fair to all parties. Let me make it clear to every Ghanaian that there is no anywhere in the constitution that tells us that if we are about to increase transport fare, we should go to the transport ministry. But rather, it is in DPR to use constitution. Okay, you'll be part of this meeting? We will be part. But to be frank and honest with you, there will not be a meeting tomorrow. Those that have to be at the meeting are not in the country. And before we go, the Attorney General's office is making plans to extradite former CEO of Maslok, Sadina Tamaklatiano, to face justice following a 10-year a ten-year jail term handed her by the Accra High Court. Head of our legal affairs desk, Richard Kujinyako, has more on this report. Contrary to claims that Maslok paid victims of the Kantaman to fire disaster, he used sums of money to enable them resettle. It turned out that no amount of money was given to the victims. There was also no evidence of any sensitization exercise organized across the country by Maslok. Prices of 350 vehicles were inflated 
while buses that were supposed to be given out to the GPRTU suffered same overpricing leading to the rejection of the buses. Over 90 million Ghana cities are said to have been lost as a result of the activities of the two. Presiding Judge Justice Ifia Sewa Sarebuche says such public officers like the two convicts are worse than armed robbers who rob people and households with AK-47 rifles. Deputy Attorney General Alfred Chiaiebua says they will begin processes to extradite the former boss and also attach their properties, both home and abroad, to defray some of the costs. You can choose to stay away, but so far as have laws relating to how you can extradite from one country to Ghana, in case there's a judgment against like this one, rest assured that should be brought down to face justice. And that's how we end the bulletin on not Joy 99.7 FM. I am amusing Yamiche Thompson. Business is next on the Super Morning Show. I see that. And it's Ricky Tika. Hey, Papa. Bobo. Papa. Oh, yeah, that's Bobo. <laughs> Ah, Bobo, so have your engine now. It is half man, half amazing. Thanks to Cross and you. Don't feel better energy. Can't touch this. Actually, guys, so Sancho's engine just died like that. Yes, so somebody managed to convince him that there is a better engine oil than quartz. And he switched. Ah, Sancho Panza now, which engine oil can be better than Quartz? No other, my guy. Quartz with its age resistant technology, it keeps your engine younger for longer. Now, you know, have you guys seen the new bottle design? It's superb. Quartz 9000 from Total Energy's gear improves fuel efficiency. Why do you think Mr. Mane and Logoso have taken the Quartz Nation movement World Cup like that? Mr. Mane, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Chairman, no money. Chairman, hey, Chairman! Quartz, keep your engine younger. For longer. Are you tired of the daily commute to work during rush hour? Or maybe you're planning a girl's night out and need a reliable ride. Perhaps you need to deliver an important parcel and want to get there on time. Whatever your reason for commuting, Access Bank and Uber have got you covered. With Access Bank Visa Card, you can now enjoy 30% off Uber rides. That's 30% off every ride. Use promo code access ride savings to enjoy affordable, convenient and cheaper rides even on a limited budget. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to save big on your daily commute. Visit our website www.ghana.accessbankplc.com or social media today to learn more and start enjoying and saving on your Uber rides like never before. Access Visa Card, the perfect partner for your Uber rides. Access Bank, more than banking. No matter your water needs, Syntex has it all. Syntex tank was first to introduce double layer tank, and now you can have as many layers as you want. Syntex tank was first to introduce white inner layer tanks in Ghana, and now introduces the customer specs order, which will let you order any color and size you want. Syntex tanks gives you the biggest warranty of seven years, which no other tank gives you. So whatever your water consumption, size of project, or demand, choose Syntex tank. Syntex tank, stress-free. Syntex tank, reliable. Syntex tank, maximum guarantee. Call 0244-335-168. Kumasi 0505-555-666. Or visit SyntexGH.com. Syntex tank, a year strong, a year tough. <clears throat> Welcome. I want to greet Uncle James in Germany. Since I was a child, you have promised me a trip abroad, sir. To date, my passport is still a virgin pool. <laughs> and then to you, baby, yeah, for that bombastic broken heart. Hey! I want you to know that latest by June, dear, I would have won big in the ideal Yonkopa promo. Win up to 600,000 Ghana CDs in cash. Another amazing prize list up for grabs with ideal Yonkopa promo. Just peel, text, and you could win big. This advert is FDA approved. Shop, save, and win at Oka Decor this season. Enjoy big discounts on curtains, bedding, carpets, and all kitchen items in our limited time offer. Shop, 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 and be one of the lucky customers to win a three-seater Italian Natuzi sofa. Shop, save, and win at Oka Decor. Terms and conditions apply. Yo, bro, SG Ghana has done it again. Low interest rates on loans this year, too. Yeah, this will be
Tally, tally. I did drop throw inside in. Let me call you back, back. Call SG Ghana rather. Collect loan and buy car, my guy. Low, very low interest rates on loans this year too. <laughs> It's difficult to keep good news to yourself, especially when it can transform your life and those close to you. SG Ghana went low on interest rates last year, and this year we are even lower. Yes, Yatisubium. Get the money you need to turn your dreams into a reality. Visit any SG Ghana branch near you and speak to our dedicated staff about the amazing Yatisubium loans today. You can also call 0302 214 314 for more details. <laughs> It's 3 a.m. What's now? Ya ti ya ti Okay, bye. Societe General Ghana. The future is you. Bafu biscuit. Morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. You? Mm, Charlie, God is in control. Oh, I overheard um, Eben asking if he slept in darkness. I did, I did, oh, I did, I did. I did. It, was a, it was a hot, dark night. I yes. can imagine. We made it to the other side, but uh, I can imagine. I definitely don't want that experience again. What? What? Anyway, I, I, ha- it makes you tired in the morning because you're yeah. not able to sleep. Well I enough. haven't slept. I really haven't. I'm conscious of every moment because, if, like, as soon as you doze off, then you know suddenly the patch of bed you are sleeping on becomes hot and starts to get wet from your own sweat, and it wakes you up. Hmm. Then you roll to another patch. And start again. <laughs> and by the time you fall asleep there, same thing. It's just, un- I mean, untenable. Yeah. And, and, and this continues till morning. Till morning. Right? And then you come to work and you are expected to be productive. It, it explains a lot. It explains a lot pa, about how things are going in our economy. Because, hmm. yenda. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, today today we, we we're, we're going to be talking about it. Uh, you know, trying to understand PURC's um, uh, sanctions that they've leveled against ECG, particularly the one that requires the board members to pay some money. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people are quite excited by it. The, the, b- both, you know, on on both sides of the debate, they are yeah. excited. Uh, the, those who think that I mean, this is this. The, the wrong people in the organization are being uh, penalized. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people think it shouldn't be the board members. And they are very excited about their position and are arguing it vociferously. There are others who think, oh, this is unprecedented. Yeah. You know, and this is how things should be. Uh, this way you hold people personally liable for, uh, you know, when things go wrong. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other group that thinks, well, I mean, yes, we should always hold people personally liable when they mess up. But you have to do it in a way that will deter them from messing up again and fix the problem, right? It will be. But the thing is, after you find these guys, will it solve the problem? Does the solution, will the solution come from ECG? What? So you might end up penalizing them and mm-hmm. maybe rightly so, right? Maybe they actually did mess up. But can they fix it? Are they the ones poised or in a position to fix this problem if the problem is that we can't pay for fuel for our plants and that's why our lights keep going off will finding the board members solve that well un- unless there's basis for finding them and there probably is yeah you know the whole idea of them uh, having to stick to the cash waterfall mechanism mm-hmm. and you know all of th- all of those things are probably good enough grounds to find them but does it solve the problem? Uh, I guess uh, the whole idea is to make them more responsible or hold, make, make them liable for um, whatever mishaps that they are at um, ECG. Mm. Huh. But but will does we that continue to sleep in darkness? <sighs> That's the question. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting into it today on the Super Morning Show. Uh, but, of course, as always, we start with Asada. First, to Total Energies. Total, we go the extra mile for you. And Millennium Insurance, your trustworthy partner. They brought us the 6 a.m. news. And for the Joy Business Report, which kicks off now, our thanks go to Omni Basic Bank at your service.
Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up this morning, IMF projects robust economic recovery for Ghana from next year with almost 5% growth rate in new economic outlook report. Also coming up, about 170 countries to support GRA over move to tax income of resident Ghanaians abroad. We hear from the... Uh, GRA, which clarifies that the policy is no new tax. Also, LPG marketers accuse government of collapsing the LPG industry. We'll tell you why. My name is Daryl Kwao. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. Hello to our friends listening from Kofi on KTU Radio. First up, IMF is projecting that Ghana's economy would rebound strongly uh, beginning next year following the current recovery being recorded. The fund is therefore projecting 4.4% end-of-year growth uh, for the country. Here's Georgia with more from Washington, D.C. in the U.S. The projection was captured in the latest IMF World Economic Outlook report released on the sidelines of the World Bank IMF annual spring meetings in Washington, D.C., USA. The projection about Ghana's economic growth for next year is higher than government's own growth forecast for 2025 or 3.3%. And even the World Bank, which is looking at about 3% growth rate for the country. It is not clear for now what might have influenced this robust growth about Ghana's economy and what some might describe as a favorable economic outlook for the country. For some, they want to link it to the IMF program, which had fought the fund to revise its growth outlook for the country on two occasions. Some industry experts say it may be clear that the two institutions are upbeat about Ghana's economic recovery going forward. However, the IMF has maintained that there still remain some threats. One can talk about maintaining that fiscal discipline in an election year and checking that budget overruns. George Affair with that report from the annual IMF World Bank meetings in Washington, D.C. in the U.S. Meantime, the IMF is worried that the upcoming elections in Ghana and other African countries could derail the economic recovery efforts. The fund is first worried about budget overruns and the possibility of a new government or sticking to ongoing stability programs. Pierre-Olivier Gorinchas is Director of Research at the IMF and has been speaking at an event in Washington, D.C. Investments are often insufficient and could be derailed further given the record number of elections this year. Credible fiscal consolidations can help lower funding costs, improve fiscal headroom, and financial stability. The key is to start early, gradually, and credibly. This will also pave the way for further monetary policy easing to support activity. The second priority is to reverse the decline in medium-term growth for low-income countries. Structural reforms should promote domestic and foreign investment and increase fiscal revenues. This will help lower borrowing costs and reduce funding needs. Director of Research at the IMF, Pierre-Olivier Gorinchas, uh, speaking there. Now, Bank of Ghana Governor Dr. Nes Addison is optimistic that inflation rate will start declining in the coming months. This is despite the current spike, which resulted in March inflation reaching 25.8%. There are fears that inflation could go up further following the recent increment in fuel prices and possible adjustment in transfer fares. But the governor uh, disagrees. We have not adjusted uh, NDA 15 plus or minus 2. Uh, we still think that this is within reach. Uh, we had expected that, you know, would have had a continuous disinflation uh, in terms of the path. But we saw what happened uh, in March, which was consistent with the base effects from 2023. We think it's just a temporary development. The month-on-month increases in inflation are still on a downward trend. And we expect that the second quarter of this year, we would resume the disinflation part. You had the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Enes Addison. The Ghana Revenue Authority has signed uh, an information sharing agreement with 170 countries across the globe to support with a move to tax foreign incomes of resident Ghanaians. According to the GRA, this is an existing policy which was passed in 2016, but lacks adequate data, lack of adequate data delayed its implementation. Clarifying the law, the GRA also dismissed claims that this is a new tax to replace a VAT on electricity. Here's Chief Revenue Officer uh, Free Zones at the Domestic Tax Division. Uh, Dominic Adano Nati. 
This is not a new tax. It has been in the laws uh, since 2016. Section 3, Section 111, and Section 103. Anyone who is in Ghana who earns income outside Ghana, who is a resident person and earn income outside Ghana, is supposed to consolidate all incomes, whether earned in Ghana or outside, and then subject that to tax. And this is a, not a new tax. It's in the Act already. We are just now enforcing that provisions in the Act. Uh, there is a process. We have signed compact with other countries. Now they have provided us with the information. So we had enough information to kickstart. We don't start anything when you don't have the basis of getting information on people's income outside. So now that we have signed an um, agreement with about 170 countries where we exchange information, now we have information enough to believe that we can drive that. Chief Revenue Officer Free Zones at the Domestic Tax Division of the GRA, Dominic Adam Nonate. Now, GCB Capital is cautioning the government against expenditure rationalization, saying it will not be enough to address budget overruns in an election year. It therefore wants the government to plug the 1.8 billion city revenue gap the hard way. Here's more. It said while expenditure rationalization is an obvious option to compensate for revenue shortfalls, it will hurt the debt service to revenue ratio, a key performance metric under the International Monetary Fund Support Program. Given Ghana's storied history of election induced fiscal slippages, GCB Capital pointed out that achieving a meaningful expenditure rationalization in an election year is a tough task. Therefore, the risk of fiscal overruns remains high despite the glowing assurances. Again, due to the long history of revenue under shooting target, the Ghana Revenue Authority and the Ministry of Finance's conviction about meeting the 2024 revenue target through compliance enforcement sounds bold and ambitious. Moving on to other news, the LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana is accusing the government of collapsing the LPG industry. According to Vice Chairman of the Association, Gabriel Kumi, government's posture does not seem to help increase consumption as it continues to impose taxes on the sector, which has placed many businesses on the brink of collapse. The LPG industry in Ghana is one of the very few industries that has been built and operated by 100% Ghanaian. This is an indigenous industry that we expect every well-meaning government mm. to protect and guide and grow. So this is the only industry we expect that government will protect. But we see government action as an attack on the industry. Government is collapsing the LPG industry in Ghana. And it's about time Ghanaians rise up and say no to this. You can't continuously slap in taxes on LPG and come back to Ghanaians and say we are working at improving consumption of LPG. Meanwhile, Executive Director of the Institute for Energy Security, Nana Mwisi the 7th, added the LPG consumption has declined, which has declined by 4.47% in the last three years. It's largely due to the price increment and called on policymakers to be proactive in addressing the issue. The price of LPG has gone up over the last four years by close to 116%, more than double the price, uh, moving from about five cities, 81 pesos per kilo in 2020 to about 12 cities, 60 pesos per kilogram at the end of 2023. When you compare this to the preceding four years, price grew up by only uh, 57%, and roughly 16.5% of the variance uh, in LPG consumption in Ghana today can be explained by the variation in the LPG price per kilogram. The influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable is so significant that it must quickly prompt policymakers mm. to take a decision on what is currently happening. And now we see the seventh is executive director of the Institute for Energy Security. Now, for making 1,500 pairs of the Royal Slipper Hinma in its first year of operation, Gold Coast Okuta is hoping to double the number in its second year. Founder of the Footwear Startup is not only promoting the Ghanaian slippers, but aims to create jobs for the many unemployed youth. Here's the concluding part of our feature on Gold Coast Okuta of the Joy Business Van. The success of Gold Coast Okuta in just a year is mind-blowing. We did 1,500 pairs as of 2023, uh, based on our, our production capacity. As at that time, we were using the manual filing machine, and even the workers that had were just two. By this time around, we are just spreading out, we, we are just increasing in number, in terms of uh, workers and also in terms of machinery. 
Samuel is aiming to double the number this year to 3,000 pairs of Ahenema. Samuel is not just in for the money, but wants to help create jobs. Good Coast to Kota wants to be part of the solution, not a problem. So with us, we, we started with two, two workers, and this time we, we, we are 20 now, because I'm here as a team lead. I have the social media team, I have the customer representative team, I have the production team, I also have the content creation team. So all in all, we are, we are 20. And with Good Coast to Kota, we normally give a uh, special advantage to disabled people just because of the stigmatization attached to uh, us in their condition they find it very difficult to actually get jobs so we've, we've taken it upon ourselves to actually recruit disabled people okay so our full episode 1 p.m right after the joy business report 5 p.m on business live on the joy news channel everyone of course i don't know why but before he talks uh let's <laughs> Let's no, wrap up with them. I, I like the story. I yeah, mean, it's important. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> yes. Relax. The market, uh, the currency market this morning, dollar going for 13 cities, 58 pesos. That's on the retail market. The pound, uh, 16 cities, 75 pesos. The euro going for 14 cities, 30 pesos. On the commodity market, could on a drop marginally to $89 a mm. barrel. Gold selling at $2,381 an ounce. Co uh, Cocoa lost $740 to open trading at $9,819 a ton. More news on our website website myjoyonline.com forward slash business the news continues with Raymond Aqua <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I didn't want to talk before this currency market is very depressing I know she will. yeah yeah every time 13 something something then pound 60 hey hmm. and I'm thinking about the Ghanaian students who are schooling in the UK today so the parent who is working in Ghana hmm? would have to convert whichever amount of money yeah. into pounds yeah. yeah and pay and if you got government scholarship and they are giving you say thirty or fifty thousand pounds, they are the only ones Christ. who don't feel the exchange. Yeah, because sixteen point five. That's a I mean, it's not, their, it's not their money. It's not anybody's pounds. Yeah, it's mm. not anyway. Their money. But mm. I was talking about the story. You was talking about yes. the, the the Gold Coast to co <laughs> co co to co No, it's not hey, relax. Co Calm down. To it, reverse. To it, no, it's not Kotoka. Kotoka is the airport. No, oh hey. no yes. confuses. Yes, to the Tokota one. No, I'm. I mean, it, the part I was interested in is the fact that he recruits uh, persons with disability. Yeah. And yes. he prioritizes that. Yes. I think it's for a small company. I think it's a, it's almost like a godly pursuit. Because you, those are the, the ones that make the most money. Yeah. yeah. When you are solving a problem in society. That's true. You know, those yeah. are the, the, this is where the Elon Musks came from. They found a problem and they solved it. And it's wonderful that he's uh, creating opportunities yeah. for those who the whole society would have he's, overlooked. He's yeah, actually it's, it's planning to open mm. a whole training acad uh, academy for such yeah. people. Oh, yeah. wow. So Fantastic. interesting. He okay. wants his business to Please, what's like the name of the company, Raymond? Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> I need <laughs> my makers. Oh, my Tokota. 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 Yes, yeah. Not Kotoka. There was a guy who who used to you know fumble his <laughs> syllables whenever he got upset. Uh, no, that's good boy. Whenever he got angry, you know, start stammering, and you know even his insults don't come out right. He wanted to call somebody stupid. He said, "Too speed." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> time now for our inspirational to song to speed, Charlie. <laughs> anyway, so let's get inspired, and this one is called Undignified. Oh, excuse me, and it's by Don't See When You Can. I think you'll like it. All right, mm -hmm. let's hit it. Yeah, tell me what you think.
and uh... hello Ray hello mm. today I won't even say that I'm happy to see you for you to come and jail on me I'm happy to see you oh get out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, they find the people who the the board members. They are find them. ECG. Mm. Yes. Uh, so when will they pay? I don't know. That one cry is not even my issue. My question is, I mean, and you know why they've been fined, right? So yeah. many of the things they were asked to do didn't get done, yeah. like the timetable, timetable and so forth. Okay. So so after you find them, can they now give a timetable? No, but you'll be fine for another zimi you should not comply with the thing though if the if the prc still thinks that it could be the fine is the first step I, i'm i'm thinking that the fine should have gone further down the the value chain not only the board members of ecg should have been fined anyway we'll get into all of that good stuff later on the show right now let's get into a drive safe campaign brought to us by john news and the multimedia group and supported by toyota superior quality and imperial general assurance solid protection and our tip today says focus on the task at hand. Defensive driving is all about being focused on the task at hand, which is driving safely. When you're behind the wheel, the main focus must always be what's going on on the road. Keep the radio volume low and don't let passengers distract you. A defensive driver is always assessing their surroundings for potential hazards and keeping their attention on weather and road conditions to monitor any changes. That's sound advice. All right. Now let's now learn how to say it right. It is brought to you by Kingdom Books, a Kingdom quality and affordability are their hallmarks. And Societe General Bank Ghana, the future is you. Something must be done. You say, either. I say, I'm. New word alert obsequious. O B S E Q U I O U S obsequious it means excessive and exaggerated humility or obedience let's use it in a sentence when the foot soldiers saw the politician they suddenly became rather obsequious tending to his every need like devoted minions and that's how you say it right All right, let's get into the news review brought to us by Syntex Tanker. You're stronger, you're tough. And Access Bank. Access Bank, more than banking. Now, let's start with the Daily Graphic. And it's reporting this morning, 2024, Green Ghana Day launched 10 million trees to be planted. This has become cliche. <laughs> because, I mean, it's almost, what's the name of that uh, literary device? Ozymoron. For it to be destroyed at this rate and be pretending that we are also planting trees <laughs> once in a year to replace the destruction that we have done. Indeed, I'm hoping that they will plant cocoa trees too because that's one of the things that are heavily needed in this republic. It's almost like Ghana's day of shame, remembering the kind of damage that we do to the environment. Now, we have gone completely quiet <laughs> on the fight against Galamse. At least the people who are supposed to be leading the fight. It's almost like now we've given them a, what they call a blank check. You do it. You do it on the low. Don't let there be any scandal about your actions on the ground. So far, there's no scandal. There's no media reports. So far, there's no media report. You are fine. Mm -hmm. And you continue with your wonderful destruction of our environment and the future of our country. So that a few people can get good, share with their friends and family, and, and project themselves as the saviors of this society. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is really what this is about. So I am not... I mean, if you choose a day, so, oh, today we are planning 10, 10 million trees, apart from what happened previously to the survival of some of these trees. But if hmm. you do that, the expectation is that it should have been going hand in hand with a conscious effort to protect the environment. Right. Which is not, we know it's not what's happening. Hmm. It's almost like it's an election year, so let's just absolutely keep quiet on perhaps the biggest damage to our environment and our future. Hmm. Anyway. And I think we should also be moving away from, you know, this deliberate planting of trees annually and, you know, with all the big, big headlines. We're not green enough. Mm. You know, when, when you drive around, you realize a lot of homes. But when you go to other countries, there are even 
you know, prescribed ways of doing it. Like every building must Absolutely. have some sort of green. We need to do that. We that's what we need in our country not just like you know like a specific place where we're planting trees that's all good but we must incorporate that in our communities we must see the greens every home at least when you're driving on the streets when you're flying charlie sometimes you're wondering where am i again <laughs> we, we must be green not just this one that makes the headlines but it, it must be part of our building I'll leave, I'll leave the said now to a new story to you. But PURC finds ECG 5.8 million. It's what Kodiansi was talking about earlier for delivery service breaches. And it's an interesting development. They explain clearly that so that they do not burden the ordinary consumer, they rarely want to target the people who are supposed to act. And so they targeted the directors of the company went mm. straight to them they are the ones who are supposed to share amongst themselves 1.86 million uh what, what they call it uh, cities uh and pay and pay i was just looking out for the timelines anyway maybe they should pay quickly if that's what the prc believes in there's also the belief now that oh we're all lied to but i don't i thought that was that is if you like trite learning nobody believed the ecg boss when he said 530 of the 33,000 transformers were the ones causing the problems that we are having in this country. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, I kept on saying 2% is never the cause of the biggest problem or the big problem that we have on our hands. But we kept on going back and forth on it. So it's almost like uh, the PUR says, oh, we are finally unveiled. But I think everybody, including Ishmael Aka, who I know has been working in this sector for a while, he did not believe that this was the main cause. The 5.30 was the main cause anyway. 6.30. Now, yeah, yes, 6.30. Uh, uh, outdoor basin, bridges causing flood to be removed. So that is the latest development there. And it's been raining and places are still flooding in the Republic of Ghana. Small rain yesterday. You could yeah. see all of this. You see places and other ends uh, flooding, as is always the case in the last almost God knows how long. But, well, we will not fix it. We will pretend that we are getting back Garrett on board and improving Garrett, but the evidence will still show that we have not done work on that. Yeah, anyway. there's, there's, a, there's a portion. Uh, the stadium, eh, mm -hmm. when you're using the stretch to, say, Independence Square, and I was so surprised that that place was flooded. Wow. <laughs> you know, you just have to drive through the entire city on a raining day, mm -hmm. and then you realize the real issues. <laughs> You, you just, it, it's almost as if you just have to stay put here, yeah, wherever you are when it's raining because you never can tell mm. but you see, the trouble areas. The sad aspect is that you can drive around the city. In fact, you can take the ministers and the president. You'll drive around the city. You'll come back next year or the next time it rains. You see the same problems. Mm. Oh, I beko, I beko. And that's, I beko I beko <laughs> I, I, and, and, and that's all we do in this yeah. country. You know, you can see the problem. You tell you, oh, uh, the, once the rains go, that, mm. that's it. We sort of just wish anyway, the problems away. Yeah. Let's move on to other stories. The Ghanaian Times newspaper boost for reforestation. Green Ghana launched to plant 10 million tree seedlings nationwide. Raymond has talked about it. And we launch it, too. Can you believe that? <laughs> we launch it, so we're going to do it on a different day. Anyway. <laughs> And then uh, former Maslok CEO Jill Ten Years in absentia that happened yesterday. The Accra High Court sentenced the former chief executive officer of the, the Microfinance and Small Loans Centre, Maslok, Miss Sedina Christine Tamaklo Ationu, to 10 years in prison for stealing procurement breaches and causing 90 million Ghana uh, cities financial loss to the states. Uh, it, it, you know some of the infractions uh, you remember the the disaster the fire disaster at the cantamanto uh, market mm -hmm. in Accra. the president then directed maslow to provide assistance of 1.46 million ghana cities to victims of the disaster but mrs satuno embezzled parts of that money uh, she she was also accused of engaging in illegal illegalities leading to the alleged stealing and financial loss uh, and then she was also accused of embezzling some 500,000 Ghana cities that was paid by a company which benefited from Maslow's support in 2024. Issue is she was absent. But we've heard uh, from a deputy minister uh, of the office of the attorney general who says that 
they are they are actually plans not just plans they've actually been um arranging to bring her back and now with the judgment yesterday it makes it even a lot more easier so we're going to get her back into ghana so that she can serve her sentence economic impacts of akosombo the, the earlier the better damn spinach yes, yes, yes. but i was also thinking uh, uh, because this was a high court decision they can appeal so my question yesterday will they begin that process in her absence as well that would be interesting the appeal in her absence yes so who'll be appealing well her lawyers <laughs> so that means they can provide her. <laughs> yes, yes. If they are in contact with her, then mm, they can yes, back, yeah. get, back, get back into the country. No, I, and again, I'm just hoping that we did not make this a partisan political issue, mm. which then becomes that if, let's say, John Mahama is elected the next time around, he says, oh, well, I have prerogative of mercy. So I'm exercising. No, 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 no. This is not one of those areas that you exercise that prerogative. This is being found, proven in court, that the woman took resources that were supposed to promote small groups, women, uh, market women, all of this, the small amount of money that they could get. And to them, some of them, is the entire capital they can use for their business. People like that do not deserve any form of mercy. So we should be, we should be clear in our minds on that, that nobody is going to treat that woman with kid gloves going into the future. Mm-hmm. Just the, the, la- the last headline. I was on to uh, the economic impact of the uh, the spillage in Akosombo. Affected communities were told have lost 1.6 billion in agri livelihoods. That's the FAO's assessment. Sad one. Mm. And what efforts have been put in place to ensure that these communities get back, uh, you know, what they've lost? How That's much do you think we're going to give them the budget? It's about, it's about it's not 200 million. 200 million, yeah. yes. Didn't it take a bit too long to arrive at this assessment? Well, assessment sometimes may take a bit of time, but uh, you know, because people are still actually struggling post the uh, you know spillage. And well, I'll tell you something shortly. Uh, the Economy Times this morning uh, says a good for oil policy may be reintroduced as CD weakens. That's according to. Uh, the governor of the Bank of Ghana. But I uh, have here with me Ghana's IMF program. I've been looking for that part uh, the whole morning <laughs> when I saw the story. Uh, you know, when Raymond came, he said, oh, Winston, have this paper. And so I found it. Um, let me, let's go to page uh, 20 of Ghana's IMF, this thing. Uh, paragraph 36 and 37. I'll just do it quickly. It says, um, at times, the BUG has provided FX support at rates other than those prevailing in the market, leading to the emergence of multiple exchange rates. Going forward, the Bank of Ghana will ensure its FX liquidity is provided at prevailing market exchange rates and implement measures to further support unifying the exchange rates. In this respect, staff welcomes the authorities' commitment not to introduce measures that give rise to multiple currency practices. To support price discovery and efficient allocation, the BOG will employ auctions as a primary channel for any FX intervention. Any bilateral trades will be conducted at the market rates. And the BOG will gradually phase out the special FX auctions for fuel distributors introduced in March 2022 and enhance the design of the regular FX auctions with the support of fund technical assistance. The BOG will also gradually reverse the recently imposed surrender requirement on gold exports to BOG. These measures will help boost FX liquidity in the banking sector and encourage price discovery and FX market deepening. Now, this was actually, uh, you know, the premise. Now, let's get to the meat. The BOG Act will be revised to strengthen the central bank independence and mitigate fiscal dominance. And this is the part. It says... An ongoing updated safeguards assessment will provide additional support for designing changes to the BOG Act. It will review the authorities' gold purchase and gold for oil programs and associated risk for the BOG. Now, this is an IMF conditionality. Mm -hmm. And so, just as we saw in the price recovery and stabilization every you know suspension and then we decided to reverse the suspension Mm -hmm. can we really do this or we are intending to use other means to do what really because the world bank the imf is indicated that you'd have to review that and so we're actually going according to what we agreed 
who were going to do. Even the uh, you know forex that was given to um, the BDCs. I just read that to you. We agreed that we're going to reverse all these. So what's this whole thing about? Oh, gold for oil may be reintroduced as CD weakens. Hmm. <laughs> we know our problem. We know. So once you go and sign a fund program, you know what you're asking for. Are they asking the IMF to waive this one? Can they? Well, well, we can go back into renegotiation. Mm. But um, the IMF has just told us that what we decided to do was not the best when it comes to, uh, re, uh, you know, our latest debt mm. uh, restructuring agreements. Mm -hmm. And so we're going back. Yeah. And so the whole talk about a staff level agreement, 360 million, it's good. But the board has not approved it. Mm. We've agreed. But you need to get that ar arrangement sorted out before you get all of these things. So I'm saying, just telling us, oh, we, I mean, we probably would, we, we are considering reintroducing this. Why did you cancel it in the first place? Because it was something you agreed with the IMF as part of your program. Let us be factual. Let us not come back and, you know, put these things out and say, oh, okay, uh, we are reconsidering. I mean, sometimes like, oh, we are reconsidering, we are reconsidering. It's so like effectively, just, if nobody's pumping dollars into our economy, we've run out of options to yes, manage the city. We have. We, we basically are saying that the ones that we have discussed and said we are putting on hold is what we are going back to because we do not have any other option on the table today. Uh -huh. You don't so, have the euro bond so option that you embark yes. on yearly. But, but and Coco too is doing something. You can go back through every IMF program we've had, what, 17 of them. Yeah. And you will never find lasting solutions in any of them. <laughs> Only plaster. Only plaster. Because they have to leave a space for, for a return. And when they yeah, and when and when they finish and they go, we too we don't have the good sense to implement things that will keep them out. We don't. You see, this is the reason why the countries who make a decision not to go to the IMF when they are in in crisis, they they earn so much respect because what they will end up doing will be a lasting solution. But you see, Kojo, the but gold for oil is never anybody's lasting solution. That's, that's my what point. We for sure. Yeah. That's, you see, that's my point. So we are already we are in that mindset of plaster, plaster, plaster. And you see the Asian that tigers like that we talk about, the Asian tigers that we talk about. Mm -hmm. But this is the other point. When Malaysia, Malaysia, I think Malaysia or Singapore, when they realized that they didn't want to go to the IMF, Malaysia, they actually implemented IMF-like policies. Which we are called homegrown. On homegrown. their own. <laughs> on their own. Yes. On they their didn't own. go there. That's something that yeah. we can't do. But you see. Really? When, when, yeah. Oh, but you know, we've, you, you've heard Isn't of the famous. Unless yeah, somebody makes no, us do you, it. You've heard the famous Professor Mill statement. I said, oh, why uh, are they in a hurry to, to leave? To leave. Hmm. Because we are just not disciplined. That's as simple as that. The old men we have who are manning important institutions. My brother, we are not. Look, if we, if we, I mean. Why would you hear the finance minister consistently say we will not overspend an election year? Because that's our stock in trade. That's what we do every time. No, and we have the solutions to all our problems. It's not that we don't know. We know the solutions to all our problems. But, but this yeah, is a country yeah, yeah, yeah. where people get into positions not because they intend to serve, but they see it as a reward for something they did. Something they did, nobody knows. So you campaign for a political sure. party to come into office. And by virtue of your campaigning for the political party to come into office, you think that once the political party wins political power and gives you a position, you must enrich yourself so that when you go into position the next eight years, you'll be able to, to survive. Go and, the storm and, and come try back. and come back and come and fleece the state again. <laughs> anyway, let's go for the online. online? Yes, yeah. let's go for the online. online. It's brought to us by Zenith Bank in your best interest. Uh, and the Zenit Fund form promo is on. Uh, sign up for a free Zenit Mastercard from now till April 30, 2024, in Zenit Bank branch nationwide, and enjoy up to two free deliveries each month when you use your card on Glovo from now until October 20, 2024. With a Zenit Mastercard, you can conveniently make everyday purchases on a pos device withdraw funds from atms and pay for goods and services online get your free zenit mastercard from the nearest zenit bank branch and enjoy this amazing offer just visit the website zenitbank.com.gh for more information terms and conditions apply zenit bank in your best interests all right uh, we've got to go now for the bbc news but go to myjournline.com check out the big stories there uh, bbc news now brought to you by fidelity bank believe with us and old mutual 10 years of greatness in Ghana here for a lifetime.
For decades, we have helped businesses connect with their trade partners all over the globe. From Ghana to Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Benin, Togo, Senegal, China, Morocco, France, Netherlands, and many other countries. We have made it possible to bring Ghana to the world. We have brought small and medium businesses closer to their customers across the regions in Ghana with our SME support facilities. We have brought relief and smiles to the faces of families with our employee personal loans. With our cutting-edge technology and digital support, we take the burden of complex thinking off you, making life simple. That is who we are, as close as a partner. Bank of Africa, we are indeed the African bank with the global reach. Hi there, turn up the volume. Perfect. The International Concrete Conference and Exhibition, ICC X West Africa 2024, is happening on the 16th and 17th of April at the Grand Arena in Accra. Join us for the second edition of ICC X West Africa. Connect with more than 50 national and international companies from the cement, precast, and concrete industries. ICC X West Africa 2024 will feature renowned keynote speakers and bespoke companies. Participation for concrete. Precast and cement professionals is free. For further information, call Richard on 0263-777-320. To pre-register, visit iccxwestafrica.org. Platinum sponsors, Gassam Limited and Keda Showmaker. Gold sponsors, Germany Trade and Invest and MC Bar Semi Ghana Limited. Technology partner, Siemens Ghana Limited. Financial partner, Bank of Africa Ghana Limited. ICCX West Africa 2024 is organized by Ad Media GmbH in collaboration with the delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Ghana. See you on the 16th and 17th of April at the Grand Arena, Accra, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Hello, Auntie Araba. Hey, Boga, how are you doing today? I want to buy Pepsodent Cavity Fighter, but I don't have enough money. So what are you going to do? Can you give me the big size? You know, as for me, I'll pay the balance later. Today, no credit. I haven't sold much this morning. If you don't have enough money for the big size, why don't you try the 120 gram pack? There's a 120 gram pack? Introducing the new Pepsodent Cavity Fighter in 120 gram pack size. More affordable and convenient. Get yours today from any supermarket near you. Every smile matters. This advert is FDA approved. When the pain is too much, don't know what else to do. So I'm gonna be a boy, yeah, I'm gonna be a Rapping now, rapping now, we'll take the pain away. Rapping now, rapping now, then my boy, I'm gonna die. Rapping on is what you need. Rapping on will relieve you of all aches and pain in your body. Rheumatic pain, menstrual pain, body pain, toothaches, and other feverish conditions. Rapping on is a quality product from Danex Iting Star Win PLC. If symptoms persist after 48 hours, consult a physician. Not suitable for children below 16 years old, asthmatic, and also patients. This advert is FDA approved. The next key decision will be made in Israel. Having successfully countered a barrage of Iranian missiles, will the Netanyahu government seek new levels of retribution and deterrence? My guest is Danny Danon, former Israeli UN ambassador and ally of Prime Minister Netanyahu. Frankly speaking, Stephen, I don't think we have a dilemma here. We have to retaliate. The question is how we do it, when we do it, against whom. But I don't think we can sit idly by after the attack we saw uh, two nights ago here in Israel. That's Danny Danon on Hard Talk after the news. Hello, I'm Roisin Hasty with the BBC News. The United Nations is launching a $2.8 billion appeal to provide aid to the Palestinian population in the Gaza Strip and occupied West Bank. The head of the UN's humanitarian agency for the Palestinian territories, Andre De Domenico, said 90% of the money was for Gaza as aid workers try to prevent famine, particularly in the north of the territory. In Gaza, I think we can say clearly today that there are two million survivors. Every day is literally a struggle to survive and uh, survive to insecurity because there is no place that is safe to stay and to live. As a humanitarian community and the international community, we're doing 
all the effort possible to bring assistance, but the reality is that there is very little that we can bring inside Gaza to tackle displacement and deal with the looming famine. The British Foreign Secretary David Cameron has travelled to Israel as tensions continue to rise in the Middle East. He's expected to meet a number of senior Israeli officials, including the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. From Jerusalem, here's James Landell. Britain and other Western powers are united in urging restraint on Israel after Iran's unprecedented missile and drone attack. Lord Cameron is one of several foreign ministers dispatched to deliver that message on the ground. He's expected to meet Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, President Herzog and his counterpart, Israel Katz. And he's likely to echo what Rishi Sunak said in a telephone call with Mr Netanyahu last night. The Prime Minister stressed that significant escalation was in no one's interest and would only deepen insecurity in the Middle East. This was a moment, he said, for calm heads to prevail. A UN agency says racism and sexism continue to play a huge role in the health of women and girls. The UN Population Fund says millions of women from ethnic, racial or indigenous minority groups have not benefited from progress in sexual and reproductive health. Dr Natalia Karnam is the executive director of the fund, the UNFPA. But women of African descent experience higher rates of mistreatment and neglect by health providers. Indigenous women are routinely denied culturally appropriate maternal health care. As a result, these groups are much more likely, and in some places it's six times more likely, to die during pregnancy or childbirth. Haiti's government has named the nine members of the new transitional council that's due to take over power and organise elections when Prime Minister Ariel Henry steps down. The seven voting members include diplomats, businessmen and a former head of the central bank. Mr Henry, who's in Puerto Rico, has been in power since the assassination of President Jovan Moise three years ago. BBC News. Myanmar's military government says the detained former leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been moved from prison to house arrest. State media quoting a spokesman for the junta said extremely hot weather had caused Miss Suu Kyi and other elderly prisoners to be relocated as a precaution against heat stroke. The Nobel laureate has been in jail since she was ousted in a coup in 2021. Ecuador has declared an energy emergency as a severe drought affects its ability to produce hydroelectric power, its main electricity source. President Daniel Noboa announced several measures to counter the crisis, including rationing power nationwide. Mimi Swaby with more details. President Naboa has slammed the inefficiency and corruption of what he has called a few miserable people. So to tackle this, he has said he's going to create the emergency committee led by him to resolve the energy problems by aggressively rooting out corruption within this sector. He also said, much to the delight of many Ecuadorians, that household energy bills or electricity bills will be halved this month. Apple has issued a partial update to its iPhone software that stops the Palestinian flag emoji from appearing when users type the word Jerusalem. The city is claimed by both Israel and the Palestinians. The issue caused controversy as critics noted that flag emojis don't appear when typing the names of other cities. Apple had earlier told the BBC that the flag's appearance was unintentional. The Israeli pavilion at the Venice Biennale, one of the most prominent gatherings in the art world, will remain closed until a ceasefire is agreed and the hostages in the hands of Hamas are released. The announcement appeared on a sign outside Israel's installation at the Biennale, a fertility-themed exhibit called Motherland. Its Israeli creator and artist Ruth Batir said she stood in solidarity with the families of the hostages. BBC News. Welcome to Hard Talk from the BBC World Service with me, Stephen Sacker. My guest in this interview recorded on the 15th of April. Congrats on not giving up on your business. You deserve a medal and your business deserves to be taken to the next level. In fact, it's about time you run a Zenith Bank SME account so you and your business can enjoy the perks of the Zenith SME business card. Oga and Oga Madam status. (laughs) 
The Zenith SME Business Card is a Visa debit card for making secure payments for goods and services. Enjoy great benefits such as free customized digital SME training, free marketing toolkits, access to Visa practical skills training, and more. Unlock the potential of your business today. Visit any Zenith Bank branch nationwide and sign up for the Zenith SME Business Card, the ultimate payment solution for SMEs. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com.gh or call 0302-680-884 or 0307-086-370. Zenith Bank, in your best interests. There are some classy celebrations that call for whipping out your favorite China sets. Same goes for your luxury vehicle. Just any engine oil won't do. Premium understands premium best. The new Shell Helix Ultra 0W20SP with carbon neutral properties is the one for your premium car. It's a fully synthetic motor oil designed using the Shell Pure Plus technology. Prevents dirt buildup with exceptional cleaning power. Leaving your pistons cleaner than a whistle up to 50% more than the industry standard and gives you stronger, longer lasting engine performance. So, if you want your classic car to run smoothly like a Ferrari for years to come, use the Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP with carbon neutral properties. Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP, designed for ultimate engine performance. Things are looking up on this side. <laughs> when you upgrade to the enhanced GCB mobile app, you start doing more with ease. Create a GCB instance account easily and conveniently with your GCB mobile app and start sending and receiving funds. All you need is your Ghana card. Pay your bills, subscriptions and fees to multiple merchants safe and secure. Charlie, tap the app. Open a GCB instant account and experience the recorded vibe. You're able to top up on all types of ECG prepaid meters with their special card readers and keep the power on. No worries, no stress. With GCB Mobile App, you can also generate prepaid and virtual cards to use on ATM machines, POS devices, and for online transactions. Well, I pay my subscriptions and fees with my GCB Mobile App conveniently. <laughs> GCB Mobile App. Download now from Google Play Store or Apple Store. Upgrade your style. GCB Bank, your bank for life. It's the most action-packed breakfast show in town. The hottest music, the best giveaways, the great interviews, and all the laughter and fun you can imagine. Don't miss the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's the best breakfast show in town.
Mm. Lawrence or what? Mm -hmm. uh, I like I like this song. Mm, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, actually it, this is uh, it says here on DJ Wobetis uh, computer Jacko featuring Snoop Dogg. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. Did I hear Snoop in there? I did. Yeah, Snoop. I yeah, did yes, not. yeah, yeah. There's Snoop in the original one, I'm sure. Anyway, no, anyway, listen. Uh, let me okay, do this. It's in a remix. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me do this really quickly because time now. So, um, th th this child is in the car with the parents right now, and they are about to get down. So let me say very quickly, happy birthday to Nora Simone Atto of Roman Ridge School, first daughter of Nathaniel Atto. It's her birthday today happy happy birthday to you you nora simone all right okay all right before we get uh, any further lpg marketers uh, particularly the lpg marketing companies association of ghana is accusing the government of collapsing the lpg industry uh, in this country according to the vice president of the lpg marketing companies association gabriel kumi government's posture does not seem to help increase consumption as it uh, continues to impose taxes on the sector uh, which has placed many businesses on the brink of collapse so this is uh, him talking about it on marketplace a little bit earlier the lpg industry in ghana is one of the very few industries that has been built and operated by 100 percent Ghanaian. this is an indigenous industry that we expect every well-meaning government mm. to protect and guide and grow so this is the only industry we expect that government will protect but we see government action as an attack on the industry government is collapsing the lpg industry in ghana and it's about time ghanaians rise up and say no to this you can't continuously slapping taxes on lpg and come back to Ghanaians and say we are working at improving consumption of LPG. So that's Gabriel Kumi, Vice President of LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana. But he's not the only one talking about this. Executive Director of the Institute of Energy Security, Nana Amwesi the Seventh, uh, also says that LPG consumption has declined by 4.47%. Uh, in the past three years. But he says this is just because of uh, the increasing cost of using LPG. Uh, he calls on policymakers to be proactive in addressing the issue. The price of LPG has gone up over the last four years by close to 116%, more than double the price, uh, moving from about five cities, 81 pesos per kilo in 2020 to about 12 cities, 60 pesos per kilogram at end of 2023. When you compare this to the preceding four years, price grew up by only uh, 57%, and roughly 16.5% of the variance uh, in LPG consumption in Ghana today can be explained by the variation in the LPG price per kilogram. The influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable is so significant that it must quickly prompt policymakers mm. to take a decision on what is currently happening. Yeah. Right. I mean, look, we started talking about this yesterday. Yes, and you? I raised the concern that LPG was 5 CD 81 uh, pesos per kilogram in January 2020. Mm. As of December 2023, that's, I mean, for me, I buy the 14.5 kilogram one. Mm. It moved up to 182 CDs. It was 84 CD for the 14.5 uh, mm. kilogram one mm. in January 2020. Last year, December, it moved up to 182 CD. Just last month, the people are showing us receipts and evidence of buying mm. are saying it is 232 CD. Christ. So you think about it. From 84 CD in 2020 to 232 <coughs> CD to fill my 14.5 kg LPG, uh, what they call it? Uh, 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 Gas. Yeah, my, my uh, cylinder. cylinder. Yeah. Think about it deeply. This is a product we introduced so that the people who are relying on wood fuel which was destroying the environment, for which we are today launching that we are going to actually plant more trees. <laughs> the trees we cut, which we are not supposed to cut, hmm. those trees we converted to wood fuel, 
that we should stop because it's destroying the environment and it's destroying our health too because respiratory disease connected to the use of wolf oil was also a big problem. Yep. All of this compounded and the effect on greenhouse gases was also a problem. So we agreed that we're going to go the way of liquefied petroleum gas, a healthier option. That is why when we introduced it, we put subsidies on it so that the poor people, in fact, there were times that we even distributed slenders people for free, take you to their homes. Some people said, okay, we can't pay next time, so we are settled on it at home and all of that. But we gave it to them for free. Then it reached a point, some very wonderful people in government forgot the idea of introducing this uh, product. And now decided that it was in our collective interest to pile taxes on it. Could you? Especially when the, when the world price started going down. We mounted plenty taxes on it. And people started complaining that, no, you are killing the entire idea of introducing the LPG uh, into the market. You are actually reducing consumption. Government has a vision of increasing consumption. Today, I saw it, like six newspapers. They had big time pages dedicated to increasing consumption of LPG. And yet, you have increased the price of the product from what used to be 84 CD in, in, in January of 2020 to the last month. Last month is what? March, right? March. 232 CD. Who is able to buy that? Exactly how do you increase consumption by increasing the price of the product? Which economics is that? <laughs> but you see, maybe maybe we have lulled government into this false sense that uh, demand for LPG is inelastic. Yeah. Maybe we have made them think so. Because according to the executive director of the <clears throat> Institute of Energy Security, uh, from from uh, over the past three years, so from 2021 mm -hmm. till now, it has only declined by 4.47%. That our demand or our consumption mm -hmm. of LPG has only uh, fallen by less than 5%. So do you think maybe this is making the government think that this is something they can tax to, to no. death? Well, certainly not, because uh, your LPG uh, consumption in the country is not 100%. Yeah. It's, I think about less than 50%. So mm -hmm. you're actually looking to, yes, everyone is shocked. You're looking, I mean, you're yes. actually, it's We're less than 50%. You're trying percent. to convince. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to convince to encourage people, to, people, people use to use it. I mean, I'll give you a typical example. Mm -hmm. I like to, I, when I go to my farm, uh, we, 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 I mean, provided LPG for a gas cylinder for a farm manager. Mm. But the last time I went, I realized that the guy had uh, chopped off some trees, and I said, "Oh, officer, I said, my guy last you hollow uh, to, to mean you know uh, my guy is very expensive now. Wow. So now you probably would have to give him money to buy that. Yes. Mm. Or if you don't give him money, he's going to be going round, and he'll be true. If he finds branches of trees, he's breaking them. No wonder the last time when I went to my farm, a tree that I had uh, protected, someone had cut the tree down. Oh. oh, yes, they had cut it down. And you see, this is the point. Why? What's our problem? The very thing that we started by subsidizing, mm -hmm. today, we want to make that also, uh, we want to burden that with taxes. So today, 14 kg. 230. Then you yes. only change the uh, pod is like uh, two additional two cities. Yes. And it's almost like every day I have to change it. Listen to this. So if, so if, for instance, and I mean, let's face that, if I have to pick a taxi mm. to go and fill my gas and back, true. how much would that cost me? Precisely. Now, how much would that cost me? And for me, I think that something must be done. We had consistently been talking about L LPG and how we're taxing LPG, making it difficult for people to use the product. It's like nobody wants to listen. Why? For, for What's me, wrong with us? For me, there are questions. There are questions because even the way in which this price has built up, mm -hmm. right? Originally, there was this um, stabilization levy, mm -hmm. which was removed to the relief of many. Then suddenly it was replaced by this $80 per ton yeah. tax, right? And so we thought, okay, so no more stabilization levy. Now there's an $80 per ton tax. Then the stabilization levy was returned. <laughs> so now we are paying the $80 per ton mm -hmm. plus stabilization levy. Then you go and start looking at the breakdown yeah. of this money we are paying. And you realize that there is a bottling plant margin there is a gas, uh, what, what, uh, a cylinder uh, depot margin. Mm -hmm. Now, the bottling plants and the cylinder depots are going to be run by private people. So why am I paying a tax to fund a private business? 
imagine the things we said about not having to pay for those uh, cars that were going to pick up our uh, tr- uh, trucks when they are broken on the ground. You remember those things we said about yes, it? Yes, yes. And how we heavily trucks. opposed the tow trucks and the tow tax because we said, why are we funding some private man's mm-hmm. business when you are supposed to invest in your own business and make sure that happens in that particular space? It was the, these same people who were saying that. Yes. Mm. The difficulty in the Republic of Ghana is that sometimes policy and the action, they don't match. There's some... Uh, frankly, could you call it illogicality? <laughs> so, on one <laughs> hand, our policy is to increase consumption. On the other hand, uh, we are piling taxes and making it almost impossible, defeating every economic principle that supports that policy by actually introducing more and making it more expensive. So that people don't think about. I remember last year or so, last two years, we did a story about how people were not buying, were not filling their gas. If it's 8, 8, 14.5, mm. they'll go and say, oh, you just give me 50 CD. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, we did that story. Yeah. And that should have sent a signal to us that it is consumption that's on the reduction level. Mm. Mm. And any sensible state official seeking to improve consumption would have really, really been interested in fixing this rather than compiling mm. or, or adding on and it's making it more difficult. the same with digitalization and the e-levy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it tells you that, that you know, it, solving the problem is not always the intent of government. Well, Sometimes it's just looking for an opportunity to insert a business model that okay. creates wealth, but not for the state. <laughs> not for the state. <laughs> all right, listen, there's a lot to talk about. We'll get into this later. We'll get some answers. All right, we need some answers from the NPA and uh, others in the value chain on this one. So stay tuned. No other place for it than here on the Super Morning Show. Wake up to joy, joy, joy. Sunshine and joy in the morning time yeah. Wake up, wake up to the super morning show Yeah, Wake up to joy Now, a poorly maintained car engine will age faster, and that is why Total Energies offers specially formulated quartz engine oil with age resistance technology. It's a breakthrough that ensures optimal performance of your engine and improves protection against mechanical wear by up to 74%, even under extreme temperatures and pressures. Choosing quartz from Total Energies is choosing the engine oil that keeps your engine running efficiently and effectively. Quartz keep your engine younger for longer. And to the businessman, trader, parents sending money to loved ones and business partners, thanks to Access Bank and PAPS partnership, you can now send money across border hassle-free. Now you can send money to pay for goods and services, make business transactions, and cover school fees across Africa without worrying about foreign exchange losses or delays. It's straightforward, secure, and keeps your mind at ease. Benefit from instant payments across Nigeria, Liberia, Gambia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone with zero foreign exchange hassle. When you send money in cities, it will be received in in any other currency by the recipient. For more information, visit our website, ghana.accessbankplc.com or call our toll-free 0800-004400. For all your cross-border payment, visit any of our branches and pop it with Access Bank, Access Bank, more than banking. Now, if you're a Toyota user, get ready for a revolution. Revolution. If you want your Toyota, Toyota engine to function optimally, then there's only one choice you have, the Toyota Genuine Motor Oil. The Toyota Genuine Motor Oil has been rigorously tested and proven to be the best oil for your Toyota engine. Now, specially crafted to keep your Toyota engine running smoothly and effectively and efficiently, the Toyota Genuine Motor Oil is available at all Toyota Ghana branches across the country. Nothing makes your engine happier than Toyota Genuine Motor Oil. For bulk purchase or distribution, contact Toyota Ghana on 0302-429-801. Toyota Ghana uh, Company Limited is proud to be associated with the dry safe tips on the super morning show and i'm sure you've been hearing the right total superior quality mm. uh, now secure your ownership in cow bank today increase your shareholding in cow bank plc if you are a cow bank shareholder by taking up your rights in our renounceable rights issue at 0.29 ghana cities per share to do so visit the website rights 
issue.calbank.net. Update your profile and make payment to take advantage of your rights before the offer ends on April 26, 2024. You may also visit any Cowbank branch to invest. For non-shareholders who wish to become part owners of Cowbank, visit any Cowbank branch and start the process of becoming a shareholder of Cowbank. Take advantage of this right issue to increase your shareholding today. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Cowbank forward together. Now, how do you keep your car in the premium league? With Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP, specially formulated with the unique Shell Pure Plus technology that actively helps keep engines clean. Uh, because everyone knows premium rolls best with premium. Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP provides unsurpassed wear and sludge protection, leaving your pistons cleaner than a whistle up to a 50% more than the industry standard and enhances fuel economy. I know Mama B likes a clean piston. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP is designed to be safe for the environment with a significant reduction in carbon emissions. Premium does roll best with premium and Shell Helix Ultra SP 0W20 is the one for your premium car. Go Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP. Go get it now to keep your engine purring. Shell Helix Ultra 0W20 SP. Made for premium. And you know it's difficult to keep good news to yourself, especially when it can transform your life and those close to you. Well, SG Ghana went low on interest rates last year. And this year we're even lower. Yes, Yatisubium. Are you an SG Ghana customer or on the control and accountant general's payroll? Then get the money you need to turn your dreams into a reality. Visit any SG Ghana branch near you and speak to our dedicated staff about the amazing Yatisubium loans available today. You can also call 0302-214-314 for more details. Offer runs to the 7th of June, 2024. Terms and conditions apply. SG Ghana, the future is you. Now, Kidnobu says, Stationary Limited is your number one supplier of quality office essentials, equipment, and furniture at affordable prices. Has introduced an online store for your shopping convenience. This means you can now shop by simply logging on to kingdomstoreonline.com without physically coming from the Eastern region to any of our branches. It is hassle free, <laughs> would arrange delivery to your homes and offices within a reasonable time. We offer free delivery within Accra and Tema, and as a payment via Momo across all networks. Terms and conditions, however, apply. A kingdom, quality, and affordability are their hallmarks. All right, well, it's time now for us to get into the birthdays. I know today we've got lots of them, so stay tuned. They're coming up with sports after these. Visited Kweku at his spunky new office to congratulate him on opening his business. And man, was I impressed! The business is just moving quick. The sales, customers, everything is just working seamlessly. The secrets, hmm. Huh. He said, it's empty and business broadband. In this fast-paced environment, we need fast and reliable internet to support all business types. No laggy online meetings, great download and upload speeds, impeccable business management systems, all inclusive. I mean, you can have it all. Shout! I signed on immediately. <laughs> to enable your business stay ahead and stay connected, make sure you're signed on to the best internet made just for businesses. MTN Business Broadband. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh and manage your account on my MTN app. Call 0244-308-111 for more information. We are good together everywhere you go. Imagine a world where your home or business is powered by the sun's boundless energy. Picture your rooftop transformed into a solar sanctuary, radiating with eco-friendly vibes and city-saving brilliance. Well, dream no more. With Standard Chartered's renewable energy loads, you can turn this dream into a dazzling reality. And guess what? Our renewable energy loads come at very low rates. That's right. We are not just offering loads. We are offering the keys to your solar-powered kingdom. Say goodbye to high electricity bills and step into a new world where every watt generated is a step towards a brighter, more sustainable future. So if you're ready to take control of your energy destiny and switch to solar today, give us a shout on any of the following phone lines. 050-153-5789 050-153-5789 
0244-674154. Let's chart a course for a brighter tomorrow and make your solar dreams shine brighter than ever before. Standard Chartered, here for good. Shop, save and win at Oka Decor this season. Enjoy big discounts on curtains, bedding, carpets and all kitchen items in our limited time offer. Shop, shop, shop and be one of the lucky customers to win a three-seater Italian Natuzzi sofa. Shop, save and win at Oka Decor. Terms and conditions apply. <clears throat> Ebu Shafo, welcome. I want to greet Uncle James in Germany. Since I was a child, you have promised me a trip abroad, sir. To date, my passport is still a virgin pool. <laughs> and then to you, baby, yeah, for that bombastic broken heart. Hey! I want you to know that latest by June, dear, I would have won big in the ideal Yonkopa promo. Win up to 600,000 Ghana CDs in cash and other amazing prizes up for grabs with ideal Yonkopa promo. Just peel, text, and you could win big. This advert is FDA approved. It is a birthday messages on the Super Morning Show are brought to you by MTN. Everywhere you go, Bank of Africa, the African bank with global reach. Bank of Africa, as strong as a group, as close as a partner. And there's a belated happy birthday wish to Mr. Ben Yamwa, who's MD of Activa International Insurance. It's from the management and staff of Activa Insur- International Insurance to you. And of course, from all of us here on the Super Morning Show. Yeah. But also today is the birthday of Eugene Odami of Unimac Institute of Film and Television. So uh, you would think it's nafty. No, it's mm. Unimac Institute they have a graduation of Film tomorrow. and Television. Well, I, so, I was wondering who school you are. Uh, yes, yes. It's no mm. longer nafty. Ah. And so Eugene Odami, uh, happy, happy, happy birthday to you, bro. And uh, enjoy Unimac your day. Unimac stands for what, West? I don't know, but they have combined... Uh, it's uh, University G-I-G of G-I-G Media Arts and Culture. Uh, uh, no communication, rather. Uh, and communication. Uh, they, communication. Have com- <laughs> they have combined uh, G, G, GIG, G-I-G, Ghana Institute of Languages. There's yeah, a graduate it. of the school right behind you. Ask him mm. what his school is. People can graduate from school. They don't and know. And they don't know the yes, full yes, meaning. Yes, yes. I heard from Nigerian man be saying people. BSc law. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's very possible. It happens <laughs> some, <laughs> some people completed <laughs> university and they didn't know who their vice chancellor was. A blessed and glorious happy birthday to Kwame Ofori of SNIT. You are the love of my life and I will forever remain uh, and you will forever remain the love of my life. May God continue to hold you in grace and love and protect and preserve you for all of us. We love you. This is from Rosman, uh, also of Snit, and all the children. Uh, now, when you're saying it, say it in the way that people think it's not coming from you, because the way love of my I life started with done that at the end of the message. Yeah. <laughs> you made it sound too personal. Yeah, I've done that at the end of. Yes, it's personal anyway, coming anyway. from Rosman. Yes. Anyway. Bang anyway. Man. Anyway. Look, um, uh, I'd better do this one before I get kicked out of the newsroom. Uh, today is uh, Sarah Menza's birthday. Sarah oh, okay. Newsroom. Happy birthday to you, Sarah. Also, happy birthday to Patience Tete, Richmond Amponsa in. Nanajwa An- Anama, uh, Echo Emisa Okran, Eugene Obing in Tim, Stephen Che Entry, Ni Oblitaki, uh, Kweku Wanda, Akosie Yiwa, Eddie Blay, Akato, Jake Mensa, Nanaya Sechra, uh, Ni Ama Matifu, Imano Woyome, Atu Emisa Arthur, Mercy Asante, and Sam Quino. Oh, so Sarah Mensa's birthday today, and the lady who can call you very late in the night and say, <laughs> Please, what, what are, are we, we doing, doing tomorrow on State of Play? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's one of your producers. <laughs> she's the main producer. Uh-huh. So, please, what are we? I say, uh, uh, Sarah, 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 <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Why are you harassing people at midnight? <laughs> because you're calling late in the night. <laughs> ah, bah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, uh, Sarah, yeah. enjoy your day. Happy yeah. birthday. She's All a right. hardworking girl. Yes. And can dress for pa- uh, Atelia. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, the Joy Sports Centre is brought to you by... MTN. And everywhere, everywhere you go, go. Standard Chartered Bank here, here for, for good. good. DSTV, it's, it's your, your moment. moment. And Twisco Energy Food Drink. Twisco 
power your, your dreams. dreams. Don't forgetting bet power. So, folks, imagine a world where home, where your home or business is powered by the sun's boundless energies. I mean, picture your rooftop transforming to a solar sanctuary, radiating with eco-friendly vibes and city-saving brilliance. Well, dream no more. With Standard Chartered Renewable Energy Loans, you can turn this dream into a dazzling reality. And guess what? Our renewable energy loans come at very low rates. That's right. We're not just offering loans. We're offering the keys to your solar-powered kingdom say goodbye to high electricity bills and step into a new world where every watt generated is a step towards a brighter more sustainable future so if you're ready to take control of your energy destiny and switch to solar today give us a shout on any of the following phone lines 0501535789 or 0501535790 and then 0244674154 let's chat a course for a brighter tomorrow and make your solar dreams shine brighter than ever before standard chatted here for good we all know that carrying multiple phones around can be such a chore the only person i know now who does it is samuel dami now the unsightly bulge in your pocket the extra rate in your purse and the stress of switching from one phone to the other uh, to pick calls now imagine being able to switch between different numbers on the same phone easily and seamlessly guess what you can go seamless with mtn eSIM and enjoy the convenience of connecting multiple phone numbers to one single phone or device to check if your device is compatible sami simply dial star hash zero six hash once you receive an eid number it means your phone or device is compatible simply download my mtn app today to request your mtn eSIM and uh, well enjoy the sweet seamless life everywhere you go Thank you very much, Raymond. Good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. Welcome aboard to the Joy Sports Centre with me, Fento Tahiru Fento. Coming up. It's Hakimi. He's got support. It's Kylian Mbappe to settle it, but uh, Ter Stegen keeps it alive. The follow-up from Marco Asensio. Oh. Mbappe is the man who settled it. There's no surprise in that, but he's come from the shadows. Centre stage again, and that is the end for Barcelona. That's right, PSG destroy hapless Barcelona to book Champions League semi-final date with Borussia Dortmund, who also ousted Atletico Madrid. We also have a preview of tonight's last two blockbuster games, all in the next 10 minutes. But we'll begin here, at home as usual, and yesterday, a number of Kumase Asantu Kotoko fans stormed the club's Adakoyachi training ground, demanding that the head coach Prosper Ogun resigns following a streak of poor results. The Pokopan Warriors have lost six of their last seven Ghana Premier League games and have just one win in their last 10 matches, causing the major unrest among the fans. We sent our reporter Steven Zando to the uh, Adakoyachi training ground and he's come through with this report. Some section of Asante Kotoko fans stormed at the Kodiache yesterday before the team's afternoon training session demanded that head coach of the team, Dr. Prosper Gumnate, steps down. They want coach Ogum to step aside for another person to lead the team technically, even though the indication from Asia is that Ogum is still the right man for the job. Coach Ogum was absent from training on Tuesday based on an intel of a potential attack he had picked, so these disgruntled fans didn't meet him. But IMC chairman Kontum Punia Ferehine Nana Penkra intervened and calm was restored by speaking with the agitated fans. Leadership of the club called off the training session after the development affected the team's training schedule. Kotoko is preparing for this weekend's Premier League clash against league leader Samatex 1996 and it is not clear whether the supporters' action yesterday could potentially affect some changes in the technical team. That's a report from Steven Zando from our sister station, Love FM in Kumase. Now, President of Ghana Athletics, Bawa Fuseni, has revealed that Ghana will request to host the 2026 Senior African Athletics Championships. He believes Ghana has the facilities to host the event after the successful hosting of the African Games track and field events at the University of Ghana Stadium. It is one in its kind in Africa. It only Botswana and Kenya has this. There's even Morocco doesn't have this one. So that shows how important it is. My prayer is that we should be able to keep it for the foreseeable future. We should be able to keep it good in two, three years' time that we can request to host African Championship. That is our next big thing that we want to do. What we need is to get a coach, a resident coach, 
to come and stay in Ghana here. The facilities are good, the electronic equipment are good. What else do we need? That's Bar Fuseni, he's president for Ghana Athletics. And we finally have an explanation from Ghana Boxing uh, after the controversial fight over the weekend. Now, the president of the Ghana Boxing Federation is Ibrahim Nikwe. He says judges declared a technical draw for the bout between Ghana's Basti Samir and Nigerian Rashid Idowu to save lives. Uh, this by the former getting knocked out in the UBO light heavyweight title fight over the weekend here in Accra. Samir was sent to the canvas in the second round with a flurry of vicious hooks and failed to recover before the referee proceeded to end the bout. Now, with expectations that the Nigerian would be declared winner by a technical knockout, the judges instead declared the fight a technical draw, much to the surprise of the teaming patrons. Uh, what happened is not a problem of a referee or a judge. They have not done anything. It was clear that Basti Samuel lost the fight. But the decision stands on the life of the people there, the supporters of the Bastille Samer. And what is going on, we need to save lives at that point in time. So this is not a local sanctioning body thing. This is international belt. So we've written to the international body, the UBO people, we've given them the true results on the ground. So they themselves will come out with the results and copy the promoter and us and copy both the promoter and the GBA. Mm, Abraham Nikwe is president for the Ghana Boxing Federation. Now, elsewhere, CAF president Patrice Mosepe believes African leagues can compete with more than half of those in Europe in terms of salaries uh, to players. Issues of poor salaries have bedeviled many local leagues in Africa for ages now, leading to mass player exodus after every season. But Mosepe, who is in a working visit to Angola, is confident this gap can be bridged in the near future. What we have to do is to show the players that we can pay them, pay them very well and compete with some of the European countries. There are some that will get big, big money in the big, big leagues, which is beautiful because we want them to make as much money as possible. I can assure you that between 60 and 80 percent of the players who play outside Africa, we can compete with what they are paid. Definitely in the Scandinavian countries. We used to see how much the highest paid players get in Denmark. We used to see how much the highest paid players get in Norway, in, in Finland, Sweden, and many other countries. And we could compete and pay our African players more. That's the CAF president, Patrice Mosepe, who's also indicated that CAF is considering scrapping the CAF Confederation Cup. Uh, have introduced another competition, the African Football League, at the start of this season, and that could potentially replace the Confed Cup with CAF now left with just the Champions League and the African Football League. We're monitoring development as far as that story is concerned. But let's uh, switch our attentions to the UEFA Champions League. And let's uh, begin from Spain. That's where PSG destroyed 10-man Barcelona 4-1 in the quarterfinal. Reverse fixture to advance to the semi-final 6-4 on aggregate on a dramatic night in which the home side had a player and their coach sent off. Barcelona led 3-2 from the first leg and an early goal from Rafinha put them within sight of the last four. However, Barca defender Ronald Arrojo was sent off on the half-hour mark before goals from Osman Dembele and Vitinha drew PSG level on aggregate. Kylian Mbappe then scored a 61st-minute penalty and blasted home another in the dying stages to send PSG through. The PSG boss Luis Enrique, who supervised a similar comeback against PSG seven years ago when he was in charge of Barcelona, was thrilled after the final whistle and was seen cracking jokes with the CBS crew after the game. Sorry, I can understand Henri because he is a supporter from Arsenal. But Mika, you ah. were my my idol. I, I think we are going to be confident in, in the team. Oh my God! Now I prefer Kate. Kate, you are not Yes, yes, Luis. Oh, please accept my apology. You know, I went, I no, went no, against no, no. you. I'm sorry. Forgive me, guy. <laughs> 
That's, that's Luis Enrique there. So he was uh, uh, basically uh, confronting the CBS crew who predicted that Barcelona were going to knock out PSG. And after they qualify, he came back to confront the pundits uh, about their own prediction. But his opposite number, Xavi Hernandez, was not so pleased. He described Arojo's red card as a big shame. This is a shame that all the work of the season, uh, that because of the refereeing decision, that work finishes here. It's a shame. I would have liked to have played 11 v 11 against Luis Enrique and against PSG, all the minutes of the game. We know that there are sendings off in football, but I believe that this one was unnecessary. Hmm. Xavi Hernandez not so happy. In the other game on the night, Dortmund beat Atletico Madrid 4-2 in Germany to reach the semi-final for the first time since 2013 after a thrilling 5-4 aggregate victory. Edin Tejas' uh, side had trailed 2-1 from the first leg in Madrid but scored twice in quick succession on two occasions in a pulsating return leg in Dortmund to seal their progress. Uh, now, a lot more drama could be on the cards tonight in the last two Champions League quarterfinal ties. Defending champions Manchester City host record winners Real Madrid at the Etihad tonight. With the first leg ending in a thrilling 3 0 draw, the City boss Pep Guardiola is rallying the club supporters to create an impeccable atmosphere that would help drive his team to victory. I think our people at home will help us a lot. So we sold out everything and. Uh, we need a lot of noise, we need a lot of presence of them, especially in bad moments, because what I said before the game in Madrid, so again, that you are 90 minutes all the time, you are you are better. So there are moments that you have to suffer, then the results can be at birth, cannot be good, and we need them. Oh, ah, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's Pep Guardiola. Now, while many CCT as favorites to go to, their star midfielder, Jude Bellingham, says anyone underestimates Real Madrid at their own peril. Well, you know, I think everyone spoke a lot about them, you know, they're the treble winners and rightly so, they're an amazing team, but I think you've got to understand that that's the impression from the outside um, and that's the kind of feeling from everyone else, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a gambler, I've never been to the bookies, so I don't know the bets um, and, and the favourites and things like that, but I do know that, you know, we're Real Madrid and uh, we're a pretty good team ourselves, we've got some brilliant players and we trust in, in the abilities that we've got in the room and in the changing room. Okay, that's Jude Bellingham. At the Allianz Arena, Bayern Munich will be desperate to keep their own season going after losing the Bundesliga title to Bayer Leverkusen last weekend. The Bavarians host Arsenal in the return fixture of their Champions League quarter-final tie with the first leg ending 2-0 in London. Harry Kane, who has scored 39 goals in all competitions for Bayern this season, says it will be uh, a disaster and a big failure if they don't win the Champions League. Obviously, it's been a disappointing season for us in the league. You know, credit and congratulations to Leverkusen for what they've achieved this season. But uh, I think, you know, we're, we're an honest group and we know that we've not reached the standards that, that we need to as a team, uh, which, you know, maybe in the Champions League we, we have uh, had some better performances. So we have a great opportunity to tomorrow night in front of our fans to, you know, uh, keep the season alive and keep some hope. From the club's point of view, it will be a foul season if we don't win anything this year because we're expected to, to win. It will be a failed season if they don't win the Champions League. That's Harry Kane. Meanwhile, Arsenal also desperately need the win to keep their season alive after suffering a setback in their Premier League title charge last weekend. Their manager, Mikel Arteta, says the weekend's result will have no impact on tonight's game. A performance that put us in the Champions League semi-final. And all the preparation has been uh, to achieve that. And we have earned it. We have earned it for, for 10 months and everything that we did last season to start that journey in the Champions League after so many years. And, uh, and tomorrow I have an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. I'll throw the game away and the one that we played a few days ago because regardless of that result, uh, it's going to have no impact in what's going to happen tomorrow. Refocus and, um, and start to build um, the confidence, the trust, the understanding of the performance that we have to put tomorrow um, to beat them and, and be through in the time. Mm, that's Mikel Arteta there. We have live commentary on 99.7 Show FM and 103.9 Hits FM here this evening. Should be exciting indeed. Mamavi? Yes, Vince? You're an Arsenal fan. Oh, no, please. Yes, you. Are you uh, denying uh, your team? Arsenal? Arsenal? What Never. Team? What Never. Team? <laughs> uh, no way. Okay. I, I don't have their kind of hearts. Okay. Yeah. What team do you support? <laughs> Manchester United. Oh, you have a mind you had. You don't have an Arsenal hat. Mm -mm. 
No, I don't. I don't. I, I find don't. that hard to believe. Yeah, but I have a soft spot for them. You know, you, I want them for to Arsenal. win. To win something at yeah. least. You know this guy, Naby Keita. Yeah. The player who mm -hmm. moved from Liverpool to Werder Bremen. Now he's been suspended by his club. You know why? Mm -mm. Because over the weekend, Werder Bremen played against Bayer Leverkusen. They lost that game five 0 and Leverkusen won the league as a result. Now Naby Keita found out he would not start the match. And then decided not to travel to the game and then went home instead. Oh, wow. Now he's been suspended and the club says he will be fined as well. So he found out <laughs> before the match that he will not be starting the game. He and said, then decided that uh, he wouldn't go Men started the Amikufi. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not starting. I'm going home. And he left the team and went home. So now the club has suspended him and they're going to find him substantially as well. So that, That's what you do yeah, to get discipline on the team. I like that. I, I know. It, yeah. it seems like all the players that left Liverpool are not doing too great. Now, you know Sadio Mane has his own issues mm -hmm, before he left mm -hmm, to go to Saudi. Mm -hmm. Now Viketa now has his own problems too. Wow. Well, listen, there's plenty of sports on my jawline.com. Just log on and explore. Social media messages on the show though brought to us by Echo Bank. A better way, a better Africa. Mala 2 from Ernest Chemist for the effective treatment of malaria in both adult and children. When the pain is too much to bear, grab Rapinol. Rapinol, the rapid pain reliever. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Coffee in your cup and joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always, always the best, best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. Wake up. Good, good morning. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock on the Super Morning Show. Time for the Business Minutes. Brought to us by Consolidated Bank Ghana CBG. We stand with you, Anointed Electricals, the Generator Expert, and Wiker Recapital. Together to us tomorrow. Hello, welcome to the Joy Business Minute, brought to you by Consolidated Bangana. We stand with you, anointed electric house, the generator experts, and why can we capped out together to us tomorrow? The IMF is projecting that Ghana's economy would rebound strongly next year. The fund is therefore projecting a 4.4% end-of-year growth rate for the country. The Ghana Revenue Authority has signed an information sharing agreement with 170 countries across the globe to support the move to tax the foreign income of resident Ghanaians. The LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana is accusing government of collapsing the LPG industry. According to the association, government's posture of taxing the sector does not seem to help increase consumption. And elsewhere, United Airlines has blamed Boeing for a $200 million hit to its earnings in the first three months of this year. And that's the Joy Business Minute, brought to you by Consolidated Bank Ghana. We stand with you, anointed electric house, generator experts, and why can we capital together towards tomorrow? Show. It's the most action-packed breakfast show in town. The hottest music, the best giveaways, the great interviews, and all the laughter and fun you can imagine. Don't miss the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's the best breakfast show in town. The frequency is certainly clear. It's 99.7. It's Joy FM. Our show is the Super Morning Show. 
And of course, we brought you the Business Minute. Thanks to Consolidated Bank and CBG, we stand with you. Anointed Electricals, the generator expert, and Riker Recapital together to us tomorrow. Anointed Engineering Services Limited is into sales of ultra silent generators from 5 kVA to 2,500 kVA. They also undertake maintenance and repairs of all kinds of diesel generators. They stock genuine spare parts. And they do generator rentals as well. They have branches nationwide. Their latest branches, uh, though in Am- Amrahia, Frims Oil on the main Adenta Dodowa Road. You can also find them in East Ligon, Lagos Avenue Road, opposite Tom Rick Hotel. And in Tema, Tema General Hospital Road, Community 9 is just after the overhead. They are also in Kaswa of the Wager Kaswa Road near Simaf Cement Depot. And Odoko, that's where they have their head office at number 77, Anointed House of the Doc on Malam Road, but call the hotline anytime on 0243480334. That's 0243480334. Now, Waikari Capital is a multinational fund management company regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Waikari Capital, with experience in fund management and investment banking has over the years helped its customers to thrive by enabling them to achieve their lifetime financial goals. Now, Waikari Capital invests funds in ways that create a positive future for its customers, their families and businesses, and they also offer corporate finance and advisory. So this way, Waikari Capital helps its customers to create the best life. And they want to create one for you. Uh, They want you to speak to them. Speak to Waikari Capital today on 050-1577-546 or 050-1577-547. Their office is on the fourth floor of the Gulf House opposite the Ghana Standards Authority, Accra. There's a website, waikarecapital.com, and it's W-A-I-C-A-R-E capital.com. Get more information on the website. Waikari Capital, together to us tomorrow. And you can send us WhatsApp messages on 050 That's our WhatsApp number. And you can also post on X with the hashtag Joy SMS. X Joy997 with the hashtag Joy SMS. Our social media messages brought to us by Echo Bank, a better way, a better Africa. Malatu from Ernest Chemist for the effective treatment of malaria in both adults and children. When the pain is too much to bear, grab Rapinor. Rapinor is the pain, is a rapid pain reliever. Now, everyday people face different emergencies. There is a police emergency. There is also the fire emergency. You've heard of the medical emergency, but you can name the rest, right? Uh, many Ghanaians do not really know. There are emergency numbers. Well, here is one you would want to remember. Star 770 hash. Yes, star 770 hash is the new Ecobank money emergency number. Star 770 hash gives you instant access to loans, fund transfers, utility payments, airtime and data purchases, and so much more, even without data. So there's no need to panic when you find yourself in any money emergency. All you need is Ecobank coming to your rescue. Now, dial star 770 hash now for solutions to your money emergencies. Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Mm. Good morning to my friend Fred Amagashi of Ecobank Osu Branch. He's actually the branch manager. Opana. When you visit the branch, look for Fred and Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. What am I going Six to do? Six minutes there? after eight. Do business with them. You'll love it. I don't know I'll start you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want him to be pumped, so I'm directing him yeah, to a branch. Mama V! Where, where you be pump, pumped? I like to be treated a... like any other Ghanaian. That's how I they... do not believe in any form of specialized, extraordinary treatment. So here's I am a thing. man of the masses. Here's the thing. That's exactly what you get. <laughs> 
Uh, okay. That's true. Ah, uh, okay. So go there. Go there and give me the feedback. You go explain, Taya. <laughs> I'm not explaining. I'm only encouraging you to. <laughs> oh, but we're interested in getting into the details of the PRC versus ECG. <laughs> it's become one of those uh, fascinating uh, um, issues, obviously, because we haven't seen the PRC do a thing like this in the past. So, for instance, they ordered uh, that ECG, uh, the, the payments of tariff uh, revenue as prescribed by the new CWM committee, and ECG is yet to pay the shortfalls from August 2023 to February 2024. Uh, there was also the order of, for submission of details of all bank accounts and investment accounts operated by ECG. Uh, the PRC had received details of 36 out of the 61 accounts. There's also the issue of copies of ECG's power outage publications from the 1st of January 2024 to date. And the publication submitted did not cover all incidents of planned outages. And one that uh, we, we've been screaming, we're still screaming uh, waiting for that's the load management timetable but no document submitted and uh, under the company's act uh, there are instances where you know the corporate veil will be lifted and directors will be held personally liable and that's what has happened in this particular case because you know directors run the company on behalf of the company <laughs> But you know, Raymond, I've been asking, eh? It is good the action that the PRC has taken. Finding directors of ECG. But. How does that solve the energy crisis? Thank you. That's my big question. I mean, like when the lights still go off, yeah, you find them, but the issue is still, is still there. So, really, how is that resolving the current issue that we're all facing? Yeah, which because is biting really hard. Because I know this PRC fine will not come from or into my pocket. But I lost my television uh, set in this crisis. I have not asked ECG, PRC, or their friends at the Energy Ministry to pay for it. I hope you get my point. So I did not see how it, it did not see my benefit. And again, Yes, for regulatory purposes, they can hold them responsible or accountable for the things they ask them to do and they fail to do. And the expectation is that you respect your regulator and comply with the directives that they give you. Even if you disagree, even if it sounds like unintelligible gibberish to you, you have a responsibility to comply or challenge it officially in the forums that are expected to be used in challenging them. That I agree with. But my ultimate question is that I am a consumer of the products. I am a consumer who is challenged in many ways and has lost through the process. I am interested in making sure that these power sectors problem, they are fixed immediately. Not gymnastics, not pretense, <laughs> not all of the other talk around it, not purporting to charge or uh, surcharge or do the other things that do not in any way inure to my benefit. Mm. What I am interested in today is just like when I go to buy uh, data from a data service institution they actually deliver the data. I don't have to go and be telling them, why have you decided to suspend the data? Why are you not providing data today, tomorrow, in the evening, and all of that? When I buy other services, when I enter the shop to go and buy the product, when I pay for it, I expect that they'll deliver it. So this, this conversation is almost like making it look, oh, well, we are doing something. But how is what you're doing Impacting. a step in the direction towards... How is that a means to an end? Mm. And the end itself being regular stable supply of electricity to my home the one that i've already paid for the one that i'm convinced is excessive and expensive and of course we know that electricity prices have gone up over a period uh, at exorbitant levels but if i'm paying very much uh, too high for it i mean those days remember there's some time that you say we're not paying realistic prices you remember those yeah. times right then so oh, now we are paying enough for it last year basically every quarter they had increased it was virtually the case every quarter. They had increased electricity uh, costs and the price was through the roof. This is something I was struggling to pay, but I made sure I paid and actually delivered on my side of the bargain. I am ultimately interested in you supplying the power. Whichever process you use to supply the power, I do not care. Mm. So just get me because for the other services I get, I don't concern myself with the details about how you got the power to my home. 
I hope you get the point. Yeah, I so, do. So, so sometimes we do the conversation, we take it around some corners and I see if those are the important things. Mm. Why do I not have the same conversation with the guy who picks the garbage in my house? Why am I not the one who is seeing to whether or not his car is in the right shape? Whether the police stopped him on the way? Whether he was supposed to move through the right uh, way or using the right uh, track to take back uh, garbage? All that I know is that he came to pick it on time. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Does he do so? 100%. Now, I hope you are getting my point. I absolutely I, I'm, do. I, I'm interested in the ends here. The ends mm. here being providing the electricity that's supposed to be provided in my home. That's and it. for petty scrabbles or whatever fight you have internally, mm. I have absolutely no interest in it. Yeah. What we're basically saying is PRC versus ECG. This current action has not resolved our current problem, really. Mm-hmm. So we're still on it but listen we'll come back and talk about our second issue after we take insurance today which is brought to you by enterprise insurance at 100 celebrating our legacy securing our future insurance today is a public education service by enterprise insurance ensure you speak with the insurance broker or agent before making any insurance decisions hello i am barbara taylor in motor insurance there is the risk of being underinsured. This happens when your motor insurance coverage does not sufficiently cover the full cost of a claim that is made against you. For example, in order to minimize the cost of taking a comprehensive motor insurance policy, a driver may reduce the value of his vehicle, also known as sum insured, in order to pay less premium. But this could backfire if you cause an accident where the damage exceeds the liability you have insured because you chose the minimum limit allowed to avoid paying more premium. Now, since your insurance cover cannot cater to the cost of the damage that you are liable for, you must pay the difference from your pocket. So remember that motor insurance minimum liability limits are really a starting point. Taking a policy with high limits reduces the chances of having to pay for damages out of your own pocket after an accident. It may seem you're saving money when you underinsure your vehicle. But if there's an accident, you will spend more from your pocket to repair the damages. Talk to your broker or agent about insuring your vehicle for the right value so that your insurance claim is adequate to restore your vehicle in case of an accident. Contact us at Insurance Today at myenterprisegroup.io or WhatsApp us at 0548 231149. Enterprise, your advantage. <laughs> Show in town, the hottest music, the best giveaways, the great interviews, and all the laughter and fun you can imagine. Don't miss the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's the best breakfast show in town. The LPG industry in Ghana is one of the very few industries that has been built and operated by 100% Ghanaian. This is an indigenous industry that we expect every well-meaning government Mm. to protect and guide and grow so this is the only industry we expect that government will protect but we see government action as an attack on the industry government is collapsing the lpg industry in ghana and it's about time ghanaians rise up and say no to this you can't continuously slapping taxes on lpg and come back to Ghanaians and say, we are working at improving consumption of your food. Coffee in your cup. Enjoy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always, always the best, best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. A call for all of us to rise against the taxes that government continues to pass on LPG. Now we're told that the consumption has actually dropped by 4.47%. So in one breath, you say you're encouraging people to not, to stop using charcoal, to stop, you know, doing, um, using, uh, uh, breaking down, as in cutting down trees uh, so that we can have a more sustainable environment. So you're encouraging all of us to use LPG. But then again, you turn around and you put taxes on it. How can we Ghanaians afford LPG? We're told it's going up again by some 8% and already it's crossed 200 Ghana cities. That's the 14.5 yeah. kg. 
So, how and does government justify this? And you are taking out pages in newspapers and pay for it so that they will promote consumption. Uh, isn't that ridiculous? Very contradictory. Yeah. On one hand, you want to promote consumption. On the other hand, you are actually doing everything that goes against the economics of consumption. You are making it almost impossible for people to actually buy the same product. And some people, if they need it urgently, they have to buy less than the amount that will actually be for their full one. So if it's 14.5, the guy just goes to the and says, oh, just give me 50 CD. Because mm -hmm. that's all they can pay for. But that same 50 CD was almost 80% of what he paid for if you are going back to the year 2020. So what exactly has happened within the last three or four years that you're actually charging them this amount of money? Mm. Because we have been unreasonable in our pricing yet again. And we do things as if we don't have a vision for doing that. Every policy of government has objective. Exactly what's the objective of increasing taxes on LPG? Tell me, what is the objective? The objective is to do what? Implement a cylinder recirculation model where then businesses will, some business will come and mount up and be the ones filling the bottles and say we are selling it to homes. That's the objective. But if that's the objective, why is it me, Raymond Dakwa, who should pay extra for it? Is it my business that you are protecting or whose business are you protecting? Why is the consumer the one to bear the brunt of every single terrible decision you want to make? If businesses want to invest in a project or their own, why are they not putting their money into it? Or raising money on the market like all the other colleagues are doing? Why should it be my business to build what they are supposed to build? And if it didn't work, or if it was not sensible for toll, 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 toll levy or toll tax or whatever they called at the time, why would anybody think they're sensible now? Mm. Especially when you are mindful of the condition that we find ourselves in, for the economic situation that we find ourselves, and where inflation is still trending as we speak. Why would you want to be a contributing factor to that? Mm. I mean, sometimes you just be asking yourself, when the people make the decisions, who do they consult in the first place? Yeah. Are there all nine people amongst them who also clearly will tell them that this one, because you are rich and you are making the decision, we the poor people will be heavily affected and unfortunately or unfairly affected. Mm. What is the LPG subsidy for poor people in this country? Show me. This used to be a subsidized product. Yeah. If you are no longer subsidizing it because you think it's no longer necessary, should you move from that to the point of now heavily imposing taxes and levies mm. on it? And those who do business in this area actually petitioned the MPA, quite a number of agencies as well. And uh, where we have a conversation with them. Where are they with the petition? the MPA's explanation. I mean, what, what are they saying? Uh, join our conversation by sending us WhatsApp messages sent to 055 uh, You can also post on X with the hashtag Joy SMS. The LPG Association uh, will be joining us here on the Super Morning Show. Big stories brought to us by Telesel Connecting Energies latest from your partner for life and equity health insurance here for you. I know you're about to have the world at your fingertips because the world is, uh, the wait is finally over. Telecel is here. Telecel is a wonderful network. And my mom will attest to that. Now you have everything you want and need. Quick and reliable communication. Stress-free money transactions via Telecel Cash. Transforming your big business ideas into success stories with Telecel Business and more. Connect with Telcel and enjoy a world of endless possibilities. Because with Telcel, there's no limit, absolutely no limit to connections. Mm. Telcel, connecting energies. Happy birthday to Omai Hine Kwabena Santi. Today is his big birthday. Do you know his English name? No. Benjamin. <laughs> Oh my Hine, happy, happy, happy birthday to you. It's 21 minutes after 8. And if you're dreaming of the perfect sofa to upgrade this year, your dream sofa is now a reality at latest film. Introducing our sensational V sofa range where comfort meets style at prizes that will make your heart skip a beat. So just hop into any latest film showroom nationwide to dive into a world of colors and choices. From the sleek L-shaped V sofa, which will cost you just about 3,100 Ghana CDs. You can also get the complete V sofa set. And that is 6,500 Ghana CDs. If you ask me, this is like the coolest deal. You have the opportunity to elevate your living space with latest foam. That's your forever partner in comfort and luxury. Harry, your perfect sofa awaits. Latest foam is your partner for life. 
Now, in today's competitive business landscape, a healthy workforce is a foundation of success, and you should know that by now. That's why we have designed our corporate health plans to empower your employees and enhance your organization's performance with equity health insurance. You're not just investing in insurance. You are investing in the future of your company. Our plans are tailored to meet the unique needs of your employees, providing comprehensive coverage and incomparable benefits. Our commitment goes beyond paperwork and premiums. At Equity Health Insurance, we stay with you all the way, all the way. Now, call us now on 0501-515-124 or 0506-607-910 and let us serve you better. Equity Health Insurance, there with you. The price of LPG has gone up over the last four years by close to 116%, more than double the price, uh, moving from about five cities, 81 pesos per kilo in 2020 to about 12 cities, 60 pesos per kilogram at the end of 2023. When you compare this to the preceding four years, price grew up by only uh, 57%. And roughly 16.5% of the variance uh, in LPG consumption in Ghana today can be explained by the variation in LPG price per kilogram. The influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable is so significant that it must quickly prompt policymakers mm. to take a decision on what is currently happening. Wake up. Good, good morning. Good morning. Keep the frequency clear. 99.7. I send them. You get them. I get them. I send them. I get them. I pay them. Send the cell cash. I get them. I pay them. Send the cell cash. You get them. I send them. Send the cell cash. I send them. You get them. Send the cell cash. I get them. I buy them. I take them. I pay them. I send them. Send the cell cash. Tell the Telesell Cash. Experience the ultimate convenience of sending money on Telesell Cash. Sending money from Telesell Cash to Telesell Cash is free. You can also make payments to merchants on all networks. Enjoy value and total security with Telesell Cash. Telesell. Connecting energies. Man. Yeah. Don't you know Nana has assembled all of us and you are here making calls? My generator is poor too. Mm. So I'm calling a renowned Ghanaian company with an excellent track record in the sales and repairs of generator set in Accra to come and repair for me. Oh, ah. is it Anointed Electric House? Yeah. Anointed Electric House deals in quality and genuine generators with high fuel efficiency. We also rent generators. They sell quality generators from 10 kVA to 2,500 kVA. They have spare parts of other generators and can repair every 40 generators set even if you didn't buy from there look now we don't have any electrical problem in accra oh, wow. because anointed electricals is right here at east legon lagos avenue opposite tomrick hotel and that's why nana is calling us okay yes if you want to buy a brand new generator or repair the old one visit anointed electrical or if you are reading accra call a hotline 0246-423-534 or call 0243-480-334 they have qualified and dedicated men on 20 Four hour after sales service. Hey, then let's go and listen to Nana. Let's go. <laughs> Gosh, after giving you the hint, won't you give me anything? <laughs> <laughs> Anointed the generator experts. 
Weicker Re Capital. We are a multinational fund management company regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Our aim is to help our customers thrive by enabling them to achieve their lifetime financial goals while investing their funds in ways that create a positive future for them, their families, and their businesses. In this way, we help them to create the best life. Speak to us today. Call us on 050 157 7546 or 050 157 7547. Visit www.wikarecapital.com. Wika Recapital. Together towards tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelt as Adansi Travels and Joy FM are about to take you on an adventure of a lifetime. Imagine yourself soaring high with your favorite drive time program in the heart of South Africa. Starting from the 3rd of June, join me, Lexus Bell, and the Drive Time team as we dive into the soul of South Africa. Starting at an exclusive promo rate of $1,390, you get to choose your adventure. Whether it's the urban pulse of Joburg or the thrilling Sun City, we've got you covered. But wait, there's more. Be part of history and join us at the Legends and Legacy Ball at the Santin Convention Center celebrating the iconic Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Call Adansi Travels now on 0595-500-817 or visit www.adansitravels.com to secure your spot. Remember, it's more than a journey. It's an experience that will stay with you forever. Coffee in your cup and joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet.
tuning in from any place around the Asante region and uh, we are very glad you've chosen Love FM and for those of you tuning into ATL FM in the central region thank you so much for staying with us we've got very important conversations to have today on the show for those of you who are listening to us um, digitally well thanks for uh, selecting our X space conversation uh, or perhaps you are listening on myjoyonline.com or watching us live on Facebook. Uh, either way, we're so glad you could be a part of this important conversation. So, uh, well, the, the, the price of LPG is expected to go up. And uh, this is mainly because of a bit of buildup of tax on it. Now, we want to understand these taxes, why they are being imposed, why the NPA believes they are necessary. And of course, the impact it's going to have on you as a consumer, as well as the players in the industry, how this is going to affect how they do business. I think we have the best people to help us with this. Here in the studio, we have from the NPA, the head of economic regulation, uh, and that is Mr. Abbas Ibrahim Tasunti. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, Abbas. Same here. Excellent. Uh, also with us is Mr. Gabriel Kumi. Now, Mr. Kumi is the vice president of the LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana. You've seen the letter that they've written to uh, the NPA asking uh, for some questions to be answered. Uh, Gabriel is here with us, so we're grateful. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Kojo. Good to be here. Excellent. We're joined on the phone uh, by the executive director of the Institute of Energy Security, uh, Nana Amwesi the Seventh. We heard him earlier this morning uh, explaining the effect of these taxes on consumption of LPG. And so we'll be hearing from him as well. Good morning to you, Nana. Uh, I don't think we uh, we have Nana's connection yet, but we will make sure he's part of the conversation. But first, shop, scratch, and win in the Sunlight Cashback promotion. You can buy any 750 milliliter Sunlight Dish Wash promo pack, scratch, and text the unique code to star 380 star 30 hash and get your instant cashback right there no buy more win more uh, the promo packs are available at any grocery shop or supermarket near you uh, sunlight dishwash fast oil stain removal in just one wipe sunlight do more with less terms and conditions apply and are you looking for a free forwarding company to handle both your inbound and outbound shipments if yes then look no further because IS FedEx offers a wide variety of international freight services which include Air freight, sea freight, bed, less container load, or full container load, custom clearance and documentation, and our international operations link more than 200 countries supported by extensive domestic networks in all key markets and offer a range of fast and direct freight services to suit your needs. We have a dedicated staff who have in-depth knowledge in our local customs clearance processes and procedures. IES FedEx pre-finances freight pickups up to an agreed threshold for our clients, terms and conditions I've applied, please contact us now for free consultation on international freight services and customs clearance processes. Call 0501-605-1000 or 0501-631-1000. With IES Ghana, your freight is firmly secure. Now, escape to Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, Drapa Dubai. If you, I'm sure you have seen the rest, right? Now it's time to see the very best. The Kojoyansi certified best. Take yes, a break yes, from yes. Work and take a break from the south. The Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, Drapa Dubai is the place to relax, rewind, and be re energized. It is away from the stress of the south. And which students have recommended to you. This is what I wish. Yes, I heard you two were mentioning my name. Yes, yes, that uh, <laughs> the team members gathered. It was quite clear that you were the only person without experiential knowledge of the Royal mm. Cozy Hills. Mm. So we are praying for you. Uh, all the powers we can combine. Don't don't just pray. Uh huh. Mm. Combine the forces, not powers. Forces. Ah, okay. Forces include finances. <laughs> <laughs> it's always very praying. <laughs> <laughs> combine. Don't just pray. We will do our very best. Heaven, Make sure this year, heaven helps those who help themselves. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This year, mm -hmm. you will experience this one. It, it must happen. Now, so, so how are we yourself? 
<laughs> uh, we are in this together. Ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Ubuntu, we are one. <laughs> Unforgettable safari experience. I mean, we're talking about uh, an amazing array of wildlife, including lions, zebras, ostriches, and many others, using our spacious and well secured game tour vehicles or using quad bikes and squad bikes. And the point I've seen Kodi has understood about it. He said, but you know, he moves too fast for my liking. So <laughs> if you see Kodi Hansen, I'm a him. man in a hurry. Yes, avoid him, okay? Uh, water sports such as jet skiing, boat or canoe rides. There are various family games to keep you and your families excited every single day. There are great tourist attractions in the Upper West region, including the Mushroom Rock, the Slave Cave. This is the only place you go and you are guaranteed an entire regional tour. Mm. Yes, that's the only I have place I've seen. Yes, I have to be there. You go to one hotel, Entire regional tour. Hmm. Escape from the south. Escape to the north. Escape to Royal Cozy Hills Hotel Drapa Dubai for an unforgettable safari experience. Please call these numbers 0501-694-280 or 0248-844463 for reservations or further inquiries. Now. All right, then. Listen, let's get into our conversation. It's 8.37. Our guests uh, uh, from... Uh, the NPA Abbas Ibrahim Tassunti. Am I saying your name right? Yes. yes? Good. Uh, Gabriel Kumi and Nana Mwesi the seventh. Now, Gabriel, if you don't mind, uh, I'll start with you in just a moment. Ima, Ima. Sorry, Aliachi. Before uh, we engage uh, our guests, starting with Gabriel, uh, let's say good morning to Nana Amwesi the Seventh. He's the Executive Director of the Institute of Energy Security. Nana, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning to you, Kojo, uh, to Western and uh, Afro family. Kojo, uh, point of correction, Institute for Energy Security. Oh, oh. F- thank you for that. Institute right. for Energy Security. We appreciate the correction. Okay, uh, Gabriel, let me read this to you. For all intents and purposes, the introduction of this Nicodemus tax is highly insensitive and inimical to the plight of the ordinary poor Ghanaian LPG consumer. Our association therefore urges NPA to completely withdraw this heinous tax to avoid hindering investment, discouraging competition, overburdening poor consumers with higher pump prices of LPG, which will lead to the eventual collapse of the LPG downstream industry, one of the very few locally owned industries surviving in Ghana currently. Failure to address these issues could worsen the numerous challenges faced by the LPG downstream industry with its attendant environmental degradation and unemployment just to list a few. This is damning. I mean, you're not you're not on the fence on this one at all. You're not inquiring. You have determined that these taxes are bad for the industry. Why are you so convinced? Thank you, Kuju. Um, I think bef- before I answer your question, it's, it would be good for me to at least give a brief history, a brief background towards all this so that we can set the conversation into proper perspective. Um, I think around 2017, after the atom- atomic explosion, government came out to implement a cylinder recirculation. You know, in Ghana, we had even moved from cylinder recirculation in the 80s and the 90s, and we had moved to uh, mini plants across the country, and we have over 800 of these mini plants uh, in Ghana. Now, uh, after government attempt to introduce the, the, the policy, uh, 
there were a lot of issues that needed to be sorted out. Now, fast forward to uh, 2020, 2021, uh, the new administration led by uh, Mustafa Hamid came and uh, re-engaged us on the way forward as to how we should implement the cylinder recirculation. Um, at that time, we submitted a letter to MPA and, and told them that two things you have to do. Either you compensate existing players mm. on, uh, on, on the ground, pay us compensation so we can give in to cylinder recirculation. If you can't do that, then give us about 10 years to be able to recoup the investment we have, we have, we have made in the industry so that cylinder recirculation can come on board. Uh, MPA made it quite clear that government is not in a position to pay compensation. So there was a bit of back and forth on the years they are going to give us back and forth. So uh, they settled on, 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 on three years initially and then moved to five years. But we insisted on the 10 years because some of the loans we have taken to build these stations are long-term loans that need a bit of time to be able to recoup. So after some time... MPA came back to say that, okay, uh, they, are, they are prepared to roll the policy, the new policy, alongside the existing uh, policy so that the two systems can coexist. So we said, okay, then if that is the case, give us the cylinder recirculation. Let us own it so that we can implement on behalf of government. By that we mean allow us to mount cages in the existing infrastructure that we have so that we give consumers the choice of, of, of either buying the full cylinders or coming for, for the refill. Because we believe that these are two systems. There's, there's a one existing, you want to introduce a new one. We at the time felt that what you can do for Ghanaians to, to, to switch is just to develop some incentive around the current, the new one that you want to bring. Mm -hmm. So that if, for instance, consumers know that if I go to the station, the, the already filled cylinders is costing, let's say, 100 cities. But if I refill, I'm going to pay 120 cities. Straight away, the consumer will switch to the, to, to, to the, to the new cylinder. And, and for, the, for, the, for, the, for the operators in the chain, if I sitting in my station, my, ga my gas station, knows that if I sell 100 pieces of uh, already filled cylinders, I'm going to get 5,000 as my margin. But I refill that same 100 pieces, I'm going to get 2,000 as my margin. I don't need the MPA to come and tell me to switch to the new one. Mm. But the MPA said no. If we want to participate, then we have to establish a parallel structure a parallel distribution structure in the form of cylinder exchange point. What that simply means is that if, for instance, this room is, to, is a town in Ghana and we have four consumers in, in that town, uh, we sit there as the consumers. I have a gas station here that fully service these four consumers. MPA is telling us that if I want to participate in the new exchange point, I should leave my station go for loans and establish another point to be able to be part. And we said, no, we can't do that because my station, the existing station, is able to fully service all my consumers in this town. So just allow us to do that. And we, they said, no, they are not going to do that. So there was a bit of back and forth uh, then. Fast forward. Uh, there is going to be an introduction of a new player in the chain, bottling plants. There has been about three bottling plants, according to MPA, which has been built. Now, MPA wants to give those bottling plants some margins. Um, in fact, we were not consulted in, the, uh, in this arrangement. Personally, I was called into a meeting, an informal meeting about a month ago and MPA uh, made it clear that they want to introduce such a margin. And at that time, I remember they also s did indicate that, look, we want to remove the taxes on LPG because 
the marketing companies have been very, very insistent and consistent about the need for us to remove taxes from LPG so we can bring the price of the product down so the ordinary consumer can also afford to buy the product so we can all expand consumption of LPG to meet the government goal of, 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 of reaching 50% uh, by the year 2030. So just about two weeks ago, two weeks later, we only wake up to see a letter from MPA introducing $80 on a ton of LPG. And we said, no, that cannot be made to stand. And be proud to that. On the 28th of March, they wrote a letter to us removing price stabilization fund of 14 pesos. So we thought, oh, this is good, a good move to at least give consumers some respite. Because at that time, because of the weakening of the city, price of LPG was going to go up. So when that came, we, uh, we were a bit excited that uh, as more as it is, at least it's, it's, it's something. Two days after, we were slapped with this $80 per ton. And then uh, two, <laughs> three days after, that initial price stabilization uh, levy, which was removed initially, was brought back to the product. So we, we said, what, what is, we were confused. What is happening? So we made some inquiries. Then MPA... Uh, in fact, not up, at, up, up until yesterday that I heard Abbas speak to, to the fact that that $80 uh, 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 dollar on a ton is, for, uh, is, is a margin for bottling plants. And I asked myself, why will MPA be the one to create a fund and collect margins for, 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 for bottling plants? The bottling plants are in place. If you want them to operate, all that you need to do is to give them their margin. These are big guys. These are big companies that can manage their own margins. And the, 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 uh, the assertion is that the, when they ask them to work out a margin, the margins were so high. So MPA has to come in, step in. And I said, no. If the margin, there's competition in the market. If their margin is high, just allow them to come onto the field. Competition will force them to reduce their margin. Leave the, 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 the thing to market players. Let allow the market forces to determine some of these things. But you don't set up a fund and say we should pay. And to make it worse, this fund is dollar denominated. What that simply means is that if the city weakens, that ma margin goes up. If the city gains strength, that margin reduces. So I ask myself, if we have a good finance minister who will be able to strengthen our city to maybe one city, one dollar, what happens to that margin? And if we are not also able to, 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 to stabilize the city and it weakens to 20 cities, 30 cities, how much is the ordinary Ghanaian going to pay to, to be able to consume LPG? Mm -hmm. So basically... We have consistently over the years called on government to remove taxes on LPG because we believe the product, this is a product we use to subsidize in this country to the tune of about 50%. If you go to serious countries like La Côte d'Ivoire, who is serious at pushing consumption of LPG, they are subsidizing LPG. Three days ago, I, I was talking to my contact part there and I was telling him about what is going on here. And he said even they have written to government to increase subsidy on LPG. But here, we keep piling taxes and levies and margins on the product to the extent that now LPG is bought in thoughts. <laughs> I'll employ you to, to, to send your reporters around to any LPG station. Uh, our survey, we did a survey that came out with the results that over 60% of LPG consumers in Accra and Kumasi and Takradi are not able to fill their cylinders. If you go to the, to, the, to the hinterland, it's worse. It goes as high as 90 95%. So we are getting to a situation when the where the price of the product is getting so expensive that the ordinary uh, Ghanaian is no longer to uh, uh, buy. Now, and government has set an objective, set an objective in 2019-2020 to increase consumption to 50% penetration level from the then 25%. Now, how can you improve consumption of a product, a price-sensitive product like LPG, by putting up taxes, by adopting this, this behavior? Now, uh, uh, we also, yes, we also learned that uh, MP, about two months ago, MPA did something which was good. They decided that 
let us uh, uh, bid for, 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 for LPG imports. Because before then, uh, the BDCs were bringing the LPG in bits. Mm. And they decided that, look, let us bid. The one who wins the bid will be able to bring a bigger parcel mm. and then distribute to other BDCs. They will be able to have some economies of, of scale. Right. They will be able to have some strong bargaining power. And we praise them for that. And that, according to Abad, save us some 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 uh, 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 seventy uh, dollars on the on, on the premium. Mm. But you do that, and the next time you put eighty uh, dollars on it. So we we, we 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 believe this cannot be allowed to stand. Mm. Allow the BDCs. They they are big guys. They have built their plant. Give them margin. Let them come onto the market. Let them compete like any other person let them set up I, i'm sure the bdc's did their own uh, analysis before they put up these plans it doesn't mm. lies okay. in in mpa to set up a fund and collect uh, their margins for them and and, and Kujo, talking to some of the bdc's they are not happy at all mm. about what is what is going on right um well abbas i'm glad you're here um when this new business model was introduced Am I right in saying that your overarching aim was to make LPG more accessible to Ghanaians? Very right. Sir. All Very right. Nice, well, you're making it more expensive, aren't you? Okay, so maybe we can start from there. Um, I remember in one of our engagements with you, uh, the media last year about CRM, we explained the model, the value chain, and I remember you in particular asked the question, with this new value chain, obviously there's going to be a new player, and with that kind of... Um, pricing structure we have in Ghana where we encourage full cost recovery of investments. There has to be a uh, margin for this company. So if um, this company brings up a margin, won't that lead to an increase in the price of LPG? The answer was yes, that would do so. But MP was looking at other approaches to ensure that the price of LPG does not go up significantly because of the introduction of this new player. I think as Gabby rightly said, from the inception of the C CRM, it was clear that there will be a new player because this new player fills the cylinders that's a bottling plant before they are dispatched to the various exchange points and out retail outlets. So obviously that player also needs a margin. As we speak today, the importers have a margin to cover their cost. The LPGMs have a margin to cover their cost of doing business. So definitely has to be a margin for this new player as well. So uh, like we, uh, Gabby also said, we introduced the LPG tender system. And that was a solution to ensure that the introduction of this new margin, which is actually needed in the supply chain, does not lead to the consumer paying more for LPG. So that's why we did a tender and that, that dropped the price of LPG, the cost of importing LPG, so that this $80 that was coming in does not become a, a bigger burden on consumers. Although so I think we, you've skipped a step because we've been using the word margin okay. with two meanings here. Yep. We, we've talked about margin as you know a, an, a, a part of the buildup of a, a, a levy or a tax, a margin which is being collected for a certain purpose. But we've also used the word margin as a, a synonym for profit. Okay, so right? when, when it comes to our industry, mm -hmm. usually sometimes uh, when we say margin, people even assume that the LPGMs are the company's profit, right. that that's not the profit. Mm. In the price block, we, we call it a margin because right. in that, if a company sets a margin, it, in, it covers the cost of doing the business and their profit will be part of it because mm. if you are able to cover all your costs, you have to make a profit to be able to continue doing business. Mm. So when we use margin this day, in this way, mm -hmm. it actually covers the cost of construction and LPG station, your cost of operation and then your profit. Thanks for that clarification because the question I asked when we had that interaction was about profit. Okay. I was asking you if you are recreating the business model and adding one more player who must also make profit, how can you do that without the cost of the final product going up. Yeah, so that's you that's exactly what uh -huh. I'm asking. So I'm I was talking about profit. The, yes. Okay, so basically it's together because when you look at the okay. price but up, it's it states all of these. So right. the profit is part of the margin they set. Mm -hmm. So whatever margin you see for an LPG MC or BDC or the bottling plant in this case, their profit, profit will be included. in there and it will right. vary from company to company Very because well. their costs vary and their business mm -hmm. models vary as well. So this was actually the case. And you know the overarching uh, objective of this CRM is to increase consumption of LPG. So how do we increase consumption of LPG? We've noticed that the cost of building the existing retail outlets is quite expensive. And that is why you would notice that apart from the urban areas, when you go to the rural areas, you hardly see LPG retail outlets. So the LPG is not accessible. So the three tenets of this CRM is accessibility, availability, and affordability, which is very important. Mm. Availability is ensuring that the product is always available for supply. 
Access is now that the products are available, they've been imported or they've been produced. How do you get it closer to the consumers? So access becomes an issue. And that's how what the CRM seeks to do. Now, the construction of cylinder exchange points is very cheap. Let me mention that these same cylinder exchange points are going to be con or manned or owned by the LPG marketing companies. We are not introducing new players to come and do this business for them. So basically, they are the ones who are going to set up these ex exchange points. So today, if an LPG MC has not set up an exchange point in my village in Pasa, because it's expensive there and he thinks the consumption there is so low. Now he can set up an exchange point there and consumers will have access. But if the product is not affoda affordable, it's a problem because there can be access, but I will not be able to pay for it. And that's how we are looking at ways to make sure it's affordable. Most people don't use LPG because for the rural areas, you have to buy the cylinder and the other accessories. So as part of the CRM policy, cylinder ownership is not by the consumer. So the consumer will not pay for or buy cylinders. You only come, you take the product. When it's done, you come and exchange. So the margin covers the cost of cylinder purchase and cylinder maintenance as well, so that the consumer does not bear that burden. So it's increasing access. So now LPGMCs can go and establish more outlets under their brands to get access, access to consumers. Affordability. Like you said, if you introduce a new margin which includes your profit, it's adds up to the cost. So the tender has helped with that. The issue about taxes has always been on the table. You are aware that MP does not set taxes, MP does not bring in taxes, governments do this. So we've made a case to governments on several occasions about how they need to reduce or remove the taxes on LPG. Because like Gabi said, in some countries they subsidize LPG. Ghana has gone away from the uh, ta subsidies since 2015. Mm -hmm. So we don't subsidize this product. But we can reduce the taxes. Uh, but until government responds to this, we continue to make the case that there is a need. And we all know the situation in the country you know, economically. So there's a need to reduce the taxes on LPG. And that's something we continue to make. Even this year, we are still making the case that what can we do? So that even if government is going to lose the revenue it's getting on LPG, where can we get it to plug in that? So that is still on the table. But we've used a tender program to bring down the cost. Let me also mention that Gabi Wait, uh, so you're saying that there might even be more taxes in the future? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we are trying to see how we can... Governments can make revenue from other places so that if it is reducing taxes on LPG to, to increase the consumption, that can be achieved. Because this policy is to ensure that consumption rises. If consumption rises, is the LPG MCs who are still going to sell this product to consumers and this, their sales will go up. But in but addition to this $80 margin, mm -hmm. uh, you are still charging the price stabilization and recovery levy. In fact, you took it away, brought in the $80, and then brought it back. So, but I think it's important to know that these are not new taxes. They've always been there. But you what, took it away. What we, do, what we do with the price stabilization and recovery levy since 2017 when it came is that whenever in our projections we see that price are going up, we always make a request to government that this is a levy you can use to cushion consumers. Okay. So remove it and then let it reduce the burden on consumers, not only on LPG but all petrol and diesel. So we've done this several times throughout over the years. We made a request again to government that this year we've noticed the price on the world market have been going up. Exchange rate is depreciating, which is leading petrol, diesel, and LPG to go up here in Ghana. So we made that request. We were given approval to remove it. A few days later, we were asked to re restore it. So MP only asked by who? By government. Because remember, it's a levy imposed by government. Mm -hmm. Before we even remove it, we have to seek approval from government that let us remove it. That approval was granted, but a few days later, we were asked to restore it. Okay. The details of that does not come to us. Uh, government can respond to that. Yeah, but I mean, Abbas, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you and you're making the point that, oh, I mean, you even believe that uh, you know some of these taxes you know should be reduced you admit that there's the need even to subsidize so if you believe there's a need to subsidize why the introduction of a margin that actually increases the cost of the very products that you admit is expensive and needs subsidies so that's a very good question you've asked uh, winston so like i said this margin is for a player along the supply chain every player in the supply chain needs a margin to cover their cost of doing business Remember that once we build, we break on the value chain together, the value chain of LPG together, the bottling plant is needed to fill the cylinders before they are taken to the exchange point. You see, ultimately, what, this, what happens is that now the cost of doing business in terms of supplying LPG at the retail outlet will reduce. I mean, you don't have to spend so much money in terms of running the filling station. The exchange points that the retail outlets that the LPGMs have today, they spend so much money in running them. Like I also said, if they want, have to build new ones in other parts of the country where we don't have many of them you have to spend so much money. And that's why actually most of them don't do that. So the cost of establishing these exchange points and the cost of running them is way, way cheaper compared to today. So the margin comes in to ensure that this new player that's added to the value chain, which also needs a margin just like any other player in the value chain, has to be covered so that they can do business. But we didn't leave it there. 
we have to find ways to ensure that this margin coming on board doesn't make things worse. Yeah, but for talking the about that margin, one minute. So, have you considered that if you had allowed the LPG marketers to actually do this, maybe we'll not be having this kind of a conversation that we're having today? Because this margin we're talking about is something, as he talks about, the market would find its own way of dealing with it. So, there's, there's some clarity that's needed there. LPGMs are still part of this business. Initially, when the, uh, the policy was being looked at, the cylinder recirculation model, the ownership of cylinders was supposed to be with the LPGMCs. And Gabi will agree that we were on a committee together and to ensure that the LPGMCs will be able to cover the cost of cylinder ownership, it was proposed that there should be a cylinder investment margin. He even remembers, I think, maybe 2018, 2019, this cylinder uh, investment margin was even introduced at a point so that the LPGMCs can use that to purchase cylinders. So you cannot run away from the cost of cylinder ownership. Whether it stays with the selling, uh, LPG marketing company or with the bottling plant, that margin will have to be borne by someone and it will be passed on so to the, the consumer. So the investment margins at the time and the bottling margins today, share with us the investment margin at the time. And now we know the margin today. Let's do the analysis and find out which would be better. Because at the end of the day, we must find solutions that would help reduce the prices of LPG. I Let's agree go. with you. So the $80 that we are talking about, $44 is a bottling plant margin. And the thirty-six dollars is a cylinder investment margin. Thankfully, I think it's good you brought this back. The year we introduced the cylinder investment margin, and it was going to be part of the LPG marketing company's margin. It was around thirty-five pesos per liter. This thirty-six dollars per metric ton is around that same figure. You see, I think you mentioned earlier, and Gavi made a point earlier that leave it to the market to, I mean, the bottling plants themselves to set it because he agrees that there has to be that margin, but he believes that let's leave it to them. Now, it should it, this margin would have been deregulated just like we've deregulated the ma margins for the marketers as well. But we noticed that when the market, the bottling plants were asked to bring us their margins, what they would have charged to start the policy, they were quite high. And prior to they being asked to bring their margins, the committee had already worked on the model of for the margin for the bottling plant. And we felt like allowing them to start this policy with those high margins was going to make things worse for the consumer. So we engaged them and used our model and actually worked on their projections and brought this model down, the cost down from where they were to the, for, to the $44 and the cylinder margin as well. Now, this helps reduce the cost because if you just allow them to start a new policy like that, it makes the product too expensive. So this capping the margin at $80 for them, for them to start the policy. Along the line, when the policy has settled and LPGMs have been able to engage this, then they can now, we can now deregulate and let the, com the market start competition. But to start it with a high margin is a problem. Gabi, I think I have to address a point Gabi also made. Forgive me, just so that we, don't, we, we finish with this before we move on. But from your explanation, if you had let them do it, uh, the, the, you know, the marketing companies do it, the margin would have been 30-something dollars. It's very similar to what it is uh -huh. today. But because you've introduced a new player, the margin is $80. Again, I think they, if they were to do it themselves, they would have, if others, if they were to build bottling plants, they would have still charged a bottling plant margin. So it is not new. So this, I think there needs to be a clarity. The RPG marketing companies play a role. They run exchange points and sell to consumers, so they have a margin for that. Why would they have had to build bottling plants? Um, if you are building, doing the cylinder recirculation model, the value chain that we worked together with them to draw mm -hmm. requires a bottling plant sit somewhere. That has to automated bottling plant that fills the cylinders remotely before you bring these bottles to the exchange point or the retail outlets for consumers to just do the exchange. So the bottling plant is needed as part of the value chain. So whether the LPGMC themselves come together to build a bottling plant or a different player builds a bottling plant, it is the same thing. But it's also important to know that the bottling plants have not been built by companies we don't know. The same companies in Ghana who have built it already operating the downstream industry. Which companies? So, so, uh, so for example, we have one owned by Puma. We have one owned by but two actually Gold owns two. And then New Gas, one of the uh, oil marketing companies, uh, one of the bulk distribution companies who has mm. established, who has a new, uh, marketing company, Power Force is their oil marketing company. They bought new gas. So these are still players. And if, for example, the LPG marketing companies or Gabby's company had applied for the license to build a bottling plant, they would have been given the permit to do that. So the bottling plant is a new player. Okay. So whether he did build it or not, they will need a margin. But so it doesn't... It just one minute. So Gabby, I, I want your take on this before we go back. So if you, you were suggesting earlier that you should have, you know, we, we should have been allowed to play a major role. So if you had done the same, we'll be talking about same margins today? I, I, I bet to differ. Okay. Because this is this is uh, an opportunity created by government for players to take advantage. Okay. So if I am an LPG distributor 
and I, I, I do my analysis and I believe that when I build a bottling plant, it can enhance my business. I'll go ahead and do it. That is why I said allow the market to decide some of these things rather than regulatory stuff. Because if I, I'm sure those who have already built a bottling plant, they didn't build a bottling plant with any margin. They themselves went to the ma capital market to look for funds and build those plants there. Okay, so 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 why 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 are we? So so Gabi, my, my my question is, would it have been more expensive? Would it have, have been more expensive or cheaper or same? I don't think so. It would have been the same. Same margin because same, that, no, that, no, no, that, same that, eighty same eighty dollars. If you had done it as we have it today, you see now. You see currently what happens is we have the BDCs. Mm -hmm. They bring in this product. We go to them and lift the product, buy the product from them send them to so now there is the bdc has a margin already okay now the oil, uh, oil marketing companies also have a margin the retailers down there also have a margin okay that is the existing uh, system that we have if government say he wants to introduce cylinder recirculation and my company believe that look when i build i have the downstream distribution i have a lot of distribution points if i build a bottling plant, I can feed my distribution points downstream. I will go ahead and look for capital and build that. And in that case, what will be the margins? The same eighty dollars we are looking at today, or it will be lower? I I don't think I don't think that would see. I I don't know the basis of which they even fix this eighty dollars. I don't even I don't even know the basis. That's what I'm saying. Let's allow market forces to be at play. But if market forces will make it even more expensive for the consumer, then you can understand why MPA would want to regulate. They, they, yes. So just allow the, 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 the market forces to play, monitor the situation. If they are making the, the product so expensive to the consumer, then you as a regulator can step in. But if you can't tell us with certainty that it will be cheaper, why should we bother with that experiment? No, I'm not saying it's... It, 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 uh, I can't say it will be cheaper, but at least I can say with certainty that it, will, it, it, it is not going to raise the price. I can say with certainty with that. So if it's not going to raise the price, and what we are experiencing today is going to raise the price, then it means your uh, you know, suggestion would make it cheaper, wouldn't it? Well, obviously. Obviously. You see, I, we have consistently said that, look... To make things even easier, let the, 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 the players in the industry own this, 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 this policy and distribute these cylinders. Instead of going to create a new distributing ch channel to compound the issues. And they have s stated that, look, if you want to be even a distributor of these cylinders you can't even distribute it at the, at the at the existing outlets that you have you have to go and invest in another distribution channel um just before we bring you back in abbas i want to hear from nana Mwesi the se seventh um uh, who uh, runs the institute for energy security nana you you've heard our two panelists uh, propose two ways of doing this from where you sit as an analyst tell us which of these two options will make LPG more affordable, available, and accessible to the Ghanaian consumer? Thanks for having me, Kuchun. Um, already, we have a system that I think showed over the last 10 years that LPG is available. The last time I heard of a shortly of LPG in the country, um, that's what, what that's more evident. Uh, it's about uh, let me say about twelve years ago. Today, there are large importers of the LPG. Infrastructure has improved beyond uh, some oil refinery uh, tankage and pipelines. Uh, Puma has invested. Um, few other companies have invested in importation of LPG. So availability, there is not a question. Accessibility. Because we did another analysis, and yesterday our preliminary result because it was quite interesting. 
that are between the year 2011 and up to, uh, let's say, 2023, um, while uh, LPG outlets were growing, uh, consumption was also growing at a very significant rate. So that becomes a question of accessibility. And so the existing system uh, was addressing some of these issues. When you find two LPG outlets in the same neighborhood, then probably that is accidental. Normally, they want to be far from each other so that they can attract the next uh, market from a locality. And so for us, we see that LPG outlet expansion will be looking for brownfield to attract. Uh, that is the next thing. We come to, uh, I'll now come back to the uh, accessibility debate relative to the traditional system and the cylinder recirculation model. Right. But uh, you touch on price. Yes, from our own regression analysis we shared with your team yesterday on Joy News, it is clear that there's a positive um, correlation between the price of the commodity and consumption. And so as price drops, uh, consumption increases, mm. and as price increases, conversely, uh, consumption drops. And uh, the, the relationship or the coefficient is equally significant, almost the same when five per cent. And so um, we believe that when prices fall, uh, the consumption of LPG will increase, as confirmed by our analysis. We fear that should consumption, should price go up, consumers will be looking for alternative fuel and it may come to that path. But let's come to the cylinder recirculation model and the traditional system. Kojo, I fear for even the investors of this new um, bottling plants because the investment is huge and uh, it's seeking to bring LPG to us uh, in a bottle form. However, what we find today, because it was very interesting, we cited about four LPG marketing companies that are also bottling. I, I want to hold the names for now. They take the products right from the depot through the uh, LPG tanker, and the transportation is paid for uh, through the MPA system. It gets to their retail outlet. They bottle them, put them on shoes in Aboboya, and go about uh, distributing. Hmm. Now, it means I'm going to meet all the bigger recirculation plants uh, who will be confronted with uh, competition. Mm. Between your bottle at a, a different location, putting the bottle on a larger truck, bringing it to a retail outlet for onward distribution, and somebody hauling it from a storage, a box storage point through its LPG tanker to the station and bottling there within its own locality and distributing. Mm. Uh, for us, we are not against the CRM. It must be. And anywhere there's competition, you find efficiency, and that efficiency is near to the advantage of the consumer. It may help. Uh, but then we are already in a deregulated space, and the Kobe is touching on, and my brother also about agree, uh, market forces uh, must dictate where we go. And competition must be allowed. And um, with a three, that's the pronouncement I've made relative to some LPG uh, um, MC bottling themselves and distributing will not go and harm their business because the MP will take a position on that. That will negatively impact on them and bring uh, no competition. We think that competition may address some of all the issues and must be allowed. So, so in your estimation, the, in the, the recirculation system will make it cheaper or more expensive for the consumer? 
the risk of the of democracy will come to see or introduce another religion. You see, let me use the, uh, the BBC system, even in Ghana. It came to address that issue. I, I'm sorry, I have to push you for a, for a yes or no very quickly so we can take a break and come back for deeper analysis. Will it be okay, cheaper or more expensive? No, I can confirm that it will be cheaper for you. I can't confirm. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll hear more from Abbas Ibrahim Tasunti, uh, Gabriel Kumi, and Nana Amwesi the Seventh. Stay with us. Happy Wednesday and welcome to Vital Signs by Sonotech Medical Center. I'm Dr. Grace Backman. Today, let's focus on coping strategies for children with autism. Children with autism often face challenges in communication, social interaction, and behavior. But there are many strategies that can help them thrive. Visual support. Visual aids like pictures, schedules, and social stories can help children with autism understand routines and expectations. Structured routine. Establishing a consistent daily routine can provide predictability and comfort for children with autism, reducing anxiety and meltdowns. Sensory support. Sensory sensitivities are common in autism. Providing sensory-friendly environments and tools like noise-canceling headphones or weighted blankets can help children regulate their sensory experiences. And reach us on 0242-439-467. Chow time! Good, good night time! time. Daddy, how is your good life? Hey, before you attack that sumptuous variety of foods with to to, do yourself a favor. Wash your hands with soap under running water, your bowl before you eat, and at all other critical moments. That is, before you cook, after you visit the toilet, change your baby's diaper, and when you return home from anywhere. Let's all come aboard Good Life by washing our hands with soap under running water and at all other critical moments to keep the germs away from our family. Good Life, live it well. It's an everyday thing. Good Life from Ghana Health Service and Partners with support from USAID. Looking for a home in a safe, secure, and luxurious environment? Alphabet City has just what you need. Join our gated community in the lively presence of Sakumono for a carefully crafted home that provides you with peace of mind and a safe space for your children. Alphabet City boasts of leisure and recreational facilities to ensure your mental and physical well being, a good road network, 24 hour surveillance systems and security water and electricity serving as a safe haven let's meet your needs book a tour today find out more on www.waylee.org or call 0240 -111 or 0504-499-999 to make the right investment in a home alphabet city the abc of home sweet home Hey, welcome back to work. Charlie, thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Malaria really knocked you down, eh? Charlie, no joke. Hey. Fever, headache, vomiting, hey. loss of appetite. I couldn't even eat my usual fufu. <laughs> you and fufu, how we go do it? I hope you got tested before the malaria treatment. Oh, yes, I did. And thanks to Malatu, I kicked out malaria one time. Sharp. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. sorry to ruin your excitement, but your boss asked of you. Okay. She says she has plenty work for you. <laughs> no problem, Charlie. Strength D. Oh, yeah. When malaria strikes, take Malatu, containing Artemisa and Lumifantrain, comes in tablets and suspension for the effective treatment of malaria in adults and children. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Mala 2 is manufactured and distributed by Ernest Chemists Limited. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Are you a corporate organization, e-commerce business, individual or student looking for a trusted courier company? Where you can track your package and receive SMS alerts to keep you posted? At IAS FedEx, we move your documents and parcels with care to the destination of your choice. With offices across the nation, we happily deliver your package to your office or the comfort of your home. With the assurance of safety and affordability giving you peace of mind, IAS FedEx has your package in good hands. Call us on plus 233-501-605000 or plus 233-501-605000. 631000 IAS licensee of FedEx 
think about it. You can either go out to watch one game at your local and pay for the bumpy stuffy ride there. Then the food. Then the drinks with a 12,000% markup. And a new team jersey cause some drunk spilled red wine all over you. Or you can pay once right on your phone and watch 42 live Premier League games over a whole month. For unbeatable value for money entertainment, there's only one way to go. Go TV. Love it. Right, so welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. We still have uh, Abbas Tasunti with us and Gabriel Kumi and also Nana Mwesi. So we are wrapping up the conversation. Um, let's see if we can reach some consensus here. And um, let me get to you, uh, Gabi, finally. So here we are. The margin is here with us. What's going to be the impact on us? We have to pay more. Obviously, you started, you started paying more. Because uh, for the past uh, two weeks, we've been buying LPG at about 16 cities, 20 pesos per kilo, mm. from, from uh, the previous window pump price of about 14 cities. And two components contributed to, to the rise of about two cities, 20 pesos. One was this margin that we are talking about. We contributed mm. about one city, 20 pesos. And the second was the fact that the city hasn't done too well over the past few weeks. And that also pushed up the pump price of, of to about uh, for for about one more city. So currently we are buying LPG at about uh, uh, 16 cities, 20 pesos. And, and the figures we are picking from the BDCs that, that, that this next window we are going to buy it at the same price. And even from the first from the projections from the first of May, we are going to pay more for LPG. Ah, from the first of May you increase it. <laughs> we are not the one increasing the cost price of the, the cost that we buy from the BDCs are going to go up and when it does that we have no option than to pay, pay pass it on to the consumer that is why we have consistently insisted that look let's if we can subsidize LPG let's please take the taxes off so that we can stay at cost cost so that if, if 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 i'm buying it at cost then i know that i'm not slapped with any tax neither the pro is the product being subsidized so let's go back to that conversation like abbas rightly admitted other countries which are serious in pushing up consumption of lpg are paying subsidies so why do we keep uh, there are about seven or eight taxes on the lpg and yet, this is a product government wants to increase its consumption. Abbas. Yes, uh, Winston. So, so, for us, we're having to pay more already. 230 for a uh, 14 uh, kilogram cylinder. That's not affordable. And this is not something that is affordable for a product that you want to increase consumption to, uh, you know, 50% by 2030. Is there any hope of uh, reduction in the margins? So um, I don't know if you are talking about the taxes here or the margins, but the, the, even the margin uh, that so the margins, to... just like he said, I think like I've already explained, the margins apart from the bottling plant margin, which we have capped because what would have come to start the CRM would have been higher than what we have today. The other margins are all regulated, uh, deregulated, and they set the margins themselves. So we don't regulate those margins. So MP cannot promise that. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking we, about the bottling margin. Yeah, I've is explained there any that. Hope of it going down. This bottling margin we have is the small, uh, minimum we could have gotten because starting with the bottling plants and their margins themselves, way, way higher than this, we have to reduce it and cap it and make them understand that to start the policy and to get the policy rolling, the margin has to be lower. So they themselves have already made concessions and that's how come we have what we have today. So we brought them down to our analysis and what our, we think should be, which will work together. But uh, if, you are, if you permit me, sure. because we are rounding up, let me clear something. Um, I think uh, um, an impression is being made that the LPG marketing companies are not being allowed to participate in the cylinder recirculation model in the sense that if we allowed them, they would have had different margins. From the very onset of this policy, it was very clear what the value chain would be. Before even the opportunity was given for licenses to be applied to construct bottling plant, it was open to all. Any LPGMC or any group of LPGMCs could have come together to build a bottling plant. Uh, they didn't. Other companies have, which are still companies in the downstream. They are not new to us. As we speak, it is the LPG MCs who will still do the distribution of the cylinders to the consumers at the retail outlet. So they are part of the policy. Just that they being the ones to construct the bottling plant, they didn't apply for that. Like Gabby said, maybe in their own analysis as business, they didn't think they would want to go into that aspect of the business. BDCs have depots. Some BDCs have built depots. Some have built depots. So the same way some LPG MCs 
have decided to build bottling plants. Some have not done that. But to say that um, if we allow them, makes crazy the impression as though they have been prevented to do so. But nevertheless, we have a list of um, uh, LPGMs who have not even built bottling plants, but have applied to partner those who have built bottling plants to do the redistribution. So ultimately, we believe that the benefits or the advantages that the CRM has will help the LPGMs themselves. They, they are contention, as Gabi has said previously, was the fact that the original idea was to say that the existing retailers they should purely do auto gas and they shouldn't do the retail of LPG to consumers there, which we have considered that let's allow the two systems to, uh, to move together because we believe that the CRM will be the choice to go. It makes it easy for them to establish more stations to sell to consumers and they themselves will eventually realize that they, will, they can build more stations to serve consumers. So that's why can we even remove the limit of the 10 years they asked for and said that just do the two side by side in perpetuity. Ultimately, the market will determine what you want to do as a as an LPGM. So nobody has been prevented from uh, doing that. He also said something about the fact that they've borrowed money, they've uh, built the bottling plants. Why are we giving them a margin? Until any bottling plant makes a seal, they don't make any margin. Just like if you want to build an LPG retail outlet today, you go and build before you start selling, then you start making margin to recoup your investment. So money is not being given to any bottling plant because they have built a bottling plant. They would have to sell LPG. It's in the price of the LPG that their margin is added. Great. Then they make their uh, recoupment and uh, recoup their investments. Great. Gabby, I saw you shaking your head. Uh, finally, in a minute. Yes. Um, uh, you see, the, 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 this is a letter from MPA that I'm holding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says LPG refilling station shall not be permitted to exchange branded cylinders at their premises until they have transitioned such station into cylinder exchange point. This is from MPA. Yeah, I would what like to know what the date of this letter is. This, this is it. This is, you can have it. It's from your own website. And since then, you haven't this written... This was uh, 31st you haven't August written, 2020. You haven't written any letter to the bank. So, to clarify what Gabi is saying, what this letter has just said, he knows very well that under the CRM, Gabi's company can build an exchange point and run it elsewhere. But to fill branded cylinders at their stations, what is not allowed. That's what the letter is clear about. So he can continue to run his... Um, but, uh, business he has uh, today. If, if he wants to get in, he must build at, at another... So what we are saying is, what he's doing today, he should continue doing that. Consumers can come there with their own cylinders yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, fill. Yeah. But on, to do on, exchange of bottling Abbas, plants, Abbas, Abbas, of uh, full full cylinders, you use the exchange points. And to use the exchange points, you must build. Yeah. Remember that the policy is and trying if, to... And if I build, I'm just making up. If I build, I have invested. If I invest, I must recoup. If I must recoup, I must recoup from the sales of the same thing that I am doing. Exactly. And so I will transfer it basically. But Winston, remember I said that the problem we have today with LPG, increasing LPG consumption is not in the urban areas. In the rural areas, we don't have retail yeah, outlets. The urban areas, no, the, the, the urban, the urban areas time. already have the filling plant, so I you can go the there and fill. I have but the, the exchange points are needed in the rural hold areas, on all of you, hold on so all that all people can have access let to let, let, let me let me finish. Okay, so you you finish in thirty seconds because we need to. Winston, speak to our friends from the Kofiana. Winston, there is no way cylinder recirculation can increase penetration of LPG in the rural areas. It's not possible because we have built. LPG plant in some rural areas. Even with that, this system, you are able to buy in tot, but still those outlets are not able to sell. How then do you transfer fuel cylinders and expect that that rather will be sold? Everything about LPG is about affordability. If we don't tackle the, 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 the problem of affordability, we can recirculate cylinders to every hamlet in this country. Nothing will be bought. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriel Kumi, who is uh, Vice Chairman of the Association of LPG Marketing Companies. And thank you also, Abbas Tasunti of the National Petroleum Authority. This is not the end of the conversation. We definitely will continue earlier. Also, you heard from Nana Moisi the Seventh, who is the Executive Director of the Institute for Energy Security. We'll be joined shortly.
In life, choice is good, but Choice Plus safety is way better. Your safety and comfort is paramount. Under the cylinder recirculation model, you can buy LPG in a safe environment. All cylinders are inspected and maintained to the best safety standards, so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. Different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder Recirculation Model Securing your safety, creating more jobs. A message from the National Petroleum Authority under the patronage of the Ministry of Energy. Usually, we get special treatment only on our birthday. But imagine getting a special package every single day. That's what 80s Daily Deals gives you. You get unique voice and data deals exclusive to you. What's even better is it's affordable, reliable and available. Start experiencing 80s Daily Deals. Dial star 533 hash today and every single day. When you do, you'll unlock exclusive data and voice packages valid for 24 hours. Come on, people, jump on the 80 Daily Deals train. When you're with dealer now, dial star 533 hash now and access awesome data and voice deals only from AT. Life is simple. <laughs> Imagine going to your favorite watch joint and Amalia tells you, Bossu, Wale is finished, Gary is finished, and Shit or Cry is finished, so that thing can pain. Now compare that feeling to having everything you want on your watch with Lee, Gary, and plenty shit off per chair like that. Just like that Sochi Wachi, that's exactly what Aquaba Magic gives you. Enjoy rich Ghanaian stories like the second season of the legendary Inspector Bediako, the captivating Madame, and so much more on DSTV channel 150 and Go TV channel 102. Aquaba now available on joytix.com introduces an app before. Experience the future of news browsing with myjoyonline.com.
And we're about to have a conversation about increasing women's recruitment into the Ghana Armed Forces through breaking gender stereotypes. And so the Ghana Armed Forces, together with the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, and with funding from the LC Initiative, is embarking on a national recruitment awareness campaign to redirect women's recruitment into the Ghana Armed Forces through breaking stereotypes for increased participation in UN peace operations. And this morning, we're privileged uh, to be joined by Group Captain Theodora Gonyo, who's uh, the Gender Policy Advisor to the Chief of Defense Staff, who's a Gender Advisor, Department of International Peace Support Operations, Ghana Armed Forces, and Point of Contact for the LC Initiative Fund, and Madam Patience Ajari Kwabi, also known as uh, Mrs. Patience Ajari Ashi. Good morning to all of you, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I believe you're all doing very well. Very well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. When I saw, uh, you know, group captain and Kennel, I said, "Hey, I hope uh, we are safe this morning." <laughs> yeah, we are safe. <laughs> Kennel, we are safe. We are all safe. Everyone is safe here. Group captain, we are safe. <laughs> Too safe. I like the, ah, I like group captain's point. <laughs> Too safe. Uh, it means that there's no problem at all. At all. Anyway, so tell us a bit about you know this whole campaign and. Uh, you know, the various partners involved in the LC initiative. Um, thank you very much. Um, before we start the conversation, I would like us to express our gratitude to the Global Affairs Canada for their financial support to the program, and especially the team in Ghana. They've really supported this uh, program. And to the LC Initiative Fund UN uh, as well for all the contributions they've made to realize this. Indeed, over the past year and a half, um, the Ghana Armed Forces, with uh, implementing support from the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Center, have been um, implementing this program. And the idea is to ensure meaningful participation uh, of women in the Ghana Armed Forces and especially in the recruitment of women for combatant roles in the um, Ghana Armed Forces. Okay. Well, I'm just uh, curious, um, you know, for many of us, when you refer to, uh, you know, the soldiers, some people say, or the military, they say, Mary Mama. What makes the Ghana Armed Forces, you know, an appealing career choice for women, especially in combat roles, group captain. Thank you. The Ghana Armed Forces is a very safe place to work in. That is first. Secondly, you have job satisfaction and you have job security. In fact, the only thing that could make you lose your job is bad character. Hmm. That is the only thing that could make you lose your job. Once you apply yourself and you are able to perform, you don't have a problem. Now, being a combatant in the armed forces as a woman, it is the, the, the roles are not different from what a man does. But what we are saying is that when you come as, uh, to join a combat unit, you are a potential commander. You are a potential commander, and we want more women in the commanding roles. So we want to encourage women to apply to the combat and combat service support unit, combat uh, support units. Kennel, I want to hear your take on that also. What makes it appealing <laughs> for women, especially the, uh, you know, combat roles? Okay, so um, when we say combat roles, we are looking at the frontline roles that leads to leadership. Mm -hmm. So um, the maneuver units, what you see, infantry. Mm -hmm. We want women to lead to become part of decision making at that level as commanding officers as officer commanding we want to see them in when, like mine call artillery call we want to see them also um joining we want to see them in engineering rules we want to see them also in uh, the signal rules these are the things that we want to see that the women are leaders and this is where they find themselves. Not the traditional roles that we know of. Maybe they are in medical, they are in administration. No, that is not what we seek to do. We want them to just come and be part of the team and, and be leaders. Mm, I like that. So, I mean, having explained that, um, can you explain the Ghana Forces policy of equal opportunity and how it ensures uh, you know, fair treatment in recruitment, training, and promotion 
for all personnel. Okay. So the Ghana Armed Forces um, um, says that we are guaranteeing equal opportunities to all, regardless of sex. Whether you are a man or a woman, you have the same opportunities to train, to pursue um, any development that you want to pursue, to promotion, you have every opportunity. Because when we want to promote, it is based on your personal performance, academically, job-wise, and character-wise. And by the end of the day, you are recommended. So once you qualify, nobody will say you are a man, you are a woman. So you cannot do this or you can only do this. It is, we are playing on an equal field. So everyone is qualified and everyone can be selected to do anything. When it comes to appointment, everybody has the, that opportunity to, to ensure that they perform well, that they are able to um, compete fairly with everybody. Everyone has the same resources regardless of sex. So we don't discriminate and we don't um, favor anybody above the other. Hmm. Yes, Kenna, you want to make a Okay, point? so in addition to that, we know um, we have launched the National Security Strategy in 2020 for Ghana. And in that document, this equal opportunities for women is guaranteed in it. It is specified that the women should play they are rules. They should. Mm, there should be no discrimination against them. They should be part of the security of this country, and they should play the leadership roles also. Nothing by because of their their, their sex, because they are women that they should not be uh, uh, added or they should not be listened or they should not be employed in security. So that that is how far it goes. Okay. I mean, let me just get back. I mean, while we're talking about uh, you know women getting into combat roles and all of that. I just want to know what specific combat uh, combat support roles that are available for women within the Ghana Armed Forces. Okay, so when we say the combat roles um, and the combat support roles, um, let me just take it um, from services, um, by the service. Like let's say in the army. In the army, you have the infantry units. That we say, that now we call the maneuver units. And so that's purely uh, the combat roles. Then the combat support roles, you have artillery, you have ammo, you have engineers, you have signals. When you come to the Navy, they also have same, where you have the executive. And so the executive will be those who also be combat. Then you have their comms, um, communications, and then they also will have their engineering. In the Air Force, you also have the same thing. They have um, op operations, um, the pilots, you have women um, uh, pilots. In fact, uh, we have pilots for both uh, fixed wings and then pilots for the uh, rotary wings, the helicopter and all that. So these are all the combat uh, roles also per service. Well, yeah. I think you have said it all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but can you then share some stories, uh, you know, of uh, or examples of women who have excelled in these combat units of the Ghana Armed Forces? <laughs> Group yes. captain. We have quite a number of... Mm -hmm. Uh, examples we can cite right now. We might not even be able to exhaust oh. all of them. Oh, I see. Ten years ago, you couldn't think of a, a general in the Ghana Armed Forces who is a female. But we've had a two-star general, um, late Major General Constance Ejani, um, Ejani Apenu. May her soul rest in peace. She mm -hmm. has been a trailblazer. She has been a very powerful mentor to all of us. And we thank her family for giving her to us. We have currently Brigadier General um, Felicia Chumberima. We have Brigadier General Anita Asma. We have Commodore Fortina Nochi. In fact, General Asma and Commodore Nochi were Deputy Force Commanders in Mineso and Undorf. Late um, General Ejani was also a Deputy Force Commander. All these people have served outside. Uh, and in the international um, arena, and they, ha they really made us proud. Internally, we have so many others. We have um, Group Captain Selassie Agbenyefia, the first female helicopter pilot in Africa. Mm. She has done so well. She has gone on an uh, international peacekeeping mission. She's currently the first female base commander of the Ghana Air Force in Takrade. Oh, okay. In the Army, we have uh, other examples like Cecilia, uh, Major Cecilia Ezwa, who got awarded as the best um, 
female, the, the best female uh, gender advocate in international peacekeeping Stop. operations. We have quite a, a number of them. Oh, okay, I see. Yes. I see there are a lot of examples. Yes. So, um, can I say this uh, recruitment campaign is more of what an affirmative action? Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say so. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say so because um, there's a lot that goes into affirmative action policies, mm -hmm. and I don't think we want to discuss that today. But what um, it is is that, and one of the reasons why KIPTC Women, Youth, Peace, and uh, Security Institute mm -hmm. is supporting this project is because it responds directly to three very key UN uh, um, um, social security resolution. Um, the 1325, which wants to see women actively engage in peace building and peacekeeping. It also responds to the UNSCR 2240, which calls for meaningful participation again in, in uh, women's involvement in peace and security. It responds directly to the 2250, which looks at how uh, the youth engage and participate in uh, uh, in peace building peacekeeping and in leadership and so it is um, um, in direct response you know to all these international mandates that Ghana has signed on to and it is not just about the numbers as we have uh, retreated but it's about getting people to take those leadership um, positions within the Ghana Armed Forces. So it goes well beyond the affirmative action policy. Oh, great, great. So finally, um, what kind of support or collaboration is uh, the campaign seeking from the public, stakeholders, and the various institutions to ensure its success? Um, I would I would highlight a bit, but I'm sure uh, Group Captain Agonyo will continue from that. And we are getting great, great collaborations from everybody, including the media. That's why you have uh, well received us here this morning. Everywhere we go to nationally, regionally, and at the district level, we engage the media. The Ghana Education Service has also done extremely well in uh, ensuring that we are in most of their schools, engaging with the young girls and also with the youth at the tertiary institutions, giving them a good understanding of how they can come, you know, into the Ghana uh, Armed Forces. We have, of course, um, um, many organizations, and I have highlighted the role that our development partners, especially the Global Affairs Canada, have played in supporting us. The team at Kofiana International Peacekeeping Center, all of them are also supporting this project very well. It is a national affair, and of course, the great, great, great team and leaders from the Ghana Armed Forces, including the, C the Office of the CDS, and all the support that they are given. It is indeed a national drive, and uh, we are happy that we are getting the collaboration that is uh, needed. Great. So Anything? Yes, uh, Group Captain. So I'd like to add that um, this campaign is a nationwide campaign. We have been to Central Region, we have been to Eastern Region, we have been to OT and Volta. This month, we are in Greater Accra. This is a Greater Accra team you are listening to. We have a team in Bono region. We have a team in Bono East. And we are going to select senior high schools and tertiary institutions across the country to tell them that the students should, uh, ladies who want to join the armed forces, should also consider joining through the combat and combat support um, services because um, the, the society psyche is fixated on uh, traditional roles of women like being in the hospitality, being in the uh, medical corps, being in the administration, and um, the soft skill uh, areas. But we want women to also remember that they can be engineers, they can be pilots, they can be gunners, they can do everything yeah. that they feel like doing. Okay. Now, we, in terms of collaboration, we, we, we thank you for um, helping us uh, spread this message. Media houses are doing well. Ghana Education Service, as we have said. Then also we want teachers, we want individuals, we want parents and guardians to encourage their children to not discourage them because they are women. Please do not discourage your daughters from pursuing a career in the armed forces. Encourage them, give them the necessary support, let them go to school. First degree is the best. Make sure you send your children to school do not force them after SS to come and join the armed forces. The chances are brighter when okay. they have a first degree. Okay. 
Finally, Colonel. Yes, okay. So finally, uh, we thank you for this opportunity. And as has been said, you are part of our stakeholders. So we appreciate you. We want the message to keep going around, keep educating the public that in the Ghana Armed Forces, we have opportunities for women in the combat roles and the combat support roles. They are all welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colonel Elvis Asamoa. And thank you also, Group Captain Theodora Agonyo, and to you, uh, Patience Ajari Kwebi, Kwebi, for joining us. Hey, when I want to go to Nayo, when I go to Nayo.